Akiva, why should people listen to this episode of Pod Friends? Well, to answer the question that Matt's going to ask me 30 seconds in, you're going to have to listen the whole time because we don't get there till the end. Uh, so that's why you should listen for the suspense. If you want to find out, uh, uh, you know, why I got married at 20, moved across the world, there are mild answers to that question, possibly. You may, you you know, if you're interested in that, you'll at least find out something about it if you keep listening. And if not, no hard feelings. Rob and Akiva need a podcast, and they need your help. Can you make it onto the wheel? Rob and Akiva need a podcast. Yeah, they'll buy or sell your ideas. They'll talk about it till you've got in your fail. Every weekend, better attend. You can guess what will be coming up next. Rob and Akiva need a podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Pod Friends. I'm your host, Matt Scott, at Matt Scott GW. Just want to give a big shout out to Will from America, as always, for the Pod Friends theme song. Of course, I want to ask, how are you doing? Yes, you. You, the listener, how are you doing today as we start Season 3, Episode 7 of Pod Friends? Of course, featuring the one and only Akiva Wieneker. And um, if you don't know Akiva, or if you don't know why he's associated with season three, episode seven yet, we talk about it in the podcast. Um, and of course, um, many of you, if not most of you, know Akiva from the many podcasts that he's done. Um, and I'm just so thankful to have the opportunity to talk with Akiva, um, just to show an appreciation for this conversation. Akiva really chronologically and impressively took me on a journey through his life. And I felt like I was in rapture, just like sitting back and taking in so much of Akiva sharing his truth and sharing his reality and where he's been and the twists and turns that, you know, as a long time Renap listener, someone who's listened to 200 plus episodes to date, like there's so much you know about Akiva, but this was really beautiful because it was an opportunity just to hear him talk about his life and his journey. And I feel so honored to have him on um, because not only is Akiva such a talented podcaster, but also just like an incredible storyteller, an incredible person. And I really don't think Akiva gets nearly enough credit. And I know how much love he gets, but I don't think that Akiva gets nearly enough credit for um, just how brilliant he is and for all he brings to the world. And in this conversation for Pod Friends, we talked about a lot and you'll you'll hear it all. Um, but you know, we talked about his experiences um, podcasting. We talked about really um, his career in teaching, his career with the O Word, the Olympics. We talked about um, just what modern Orthodox Judaism looks like for him and what being kosher looks like for him. We talked about how and where he grew up. We talked about um, him as the perceived character, I'll say, on podcasts versus like the person. Because I think as podcasters, we all have a persona at times. This is such a great episode. And if you don't know Kiva, again, he's such a phenomenal storyteller that I feel like you could listen in and get hooked and follow along. Really quickly, before getting into the conversation with Akiva, I just want to encourage you all to subscribe to Pod Friends. And if you're not subscribed, well, look down at your app wherever you're listening, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever it is, and hit subscribe because it goes a long way to support the podcast. But also, 
one thing I really became aware of that just this past week in taking over the Rob is a Podcast Network, RHAP Grams or Rehap Grams Instagram page was that as I posted all of the Pod Friends interviews to date, number one, there have been a lot of these Pod Friends conversations, which is kind of insane. And um, I don't know where the time went, honestly. But also, there are all these conversations that sometimes you miss. Like they come out each and every week in the Survivor off season. And it's cool to hear that people are going back and catching up. And I would say to subscribe so you don't miss these conversations because whether or not you know the person who's featured, and this is the other thing I love about what I get to do, um, whether I or not I you know, know them or have had a conversation with them before, like we have RHAP, we have these shows, we have the culture of this community in common. And so, you know, I would just say to to give these episodes a listen. And you never know who you'll find a bond with and who will become your newest favorite podcaster or personality within the community. But without further ado, let me introduce our guest. Making his way to the podcast. You know him from Robin Akiva Nita Podcast, New Girl Old Guy, 32 Fans, The Olympics, and more. He is an accomplished, adaptable, adventurous, and electrifying renaissance man, a storyteller, a sportsman, an educator, a music man, a husband, a father, a friend to you and me. Like a wheel, he spins us right round, baby, right round. And not only does he need a podcast, but we need him to podcast. Please welcome the Chief Vibes Officer himself, Uncle Kiwi, Akiba Winokur. Um, I always say, like, when I hit record on the podcast, I never actually know when, like, what will officially be in the podcast. Like, I, I'll probably cut this out. This isn't interesting. Mm-hmm. No one wants to hear You have me control over it, though. It. Yeah, it's a, a big power move. Uh, I have to... no control. Like, I could be like, hey, I'll email you two days from now. I'll be like, man. Do you? I like, I said something that, like, I'm not I'm not happy with you. Like, sorry, it was gold. I'm keeping it in. Do you want to say anything really offensive right now, Akiva? No. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save that for the podcast. Yeah, this is the podcast. This is oh, the okay. podcast. All right. And no, I mean, this... not in the beginning, no. Uh, Akiva, do you know what season and episode number this is? If uh, if If everything works out. Yeah, this is um, this is season three, episode seven of Pod Friends. So congratulations, you've made it Ding. to the. Uh, you're almost in syndication. I feel like if you get oh, you know no. fourth season, you we could syndicate Pod Friends, sell it to other podcast networks, and you could you know generational wealth. That's the goal for you, right? And I'll have plenty of money, lots, plenty of money. How much money could I could I make as the as RHAP is official? Are you the? I mean, I don't know if you're the accountant of RHAP, but you do have the money. No, so. First of all, the it's accountant of RHAP. I don't know where that would uh my <laughs> my my so my grandfather is turning 94 next yeah. month. Oh yeah. And yeah. he and he is a working CPA still. Oh my gosh. What's and, the, what? The, yeah, 90, he, he, 90, he's turning 94. He's turning 94. I had a, a half hour Good talk with him. him yesterday about uh you know about his Super Bowl plans. Yeah. Um he uh yeah, he he's not as maybe he doesn't work as you know much as he used to, but yeah, he was he was working yesterday on a Sunday because it's tax season. And my mm-hmm. father is a rabbi, but he's also a CPA because he like mm-hmm. is a rabbi in a school and and he sort of front loads his classes. And then for the yeah. last 40 years, he, he from about two to seven every day, he's gone to his father's house and worked as a CPA. Mm-hmm. So I'm definitely not the accountant in, in the podcast or uh in my family because I, I started college. Uh, as an accounting major, and the first midterm I got, uh, I realized immediately, uh, oh, this is not for me. I'm very bad at this. Well, Akiva, I have to mm-hmm. ask, and no, I, I did solicit a bunch of questions from the Renap faithful uh, from Facebook. So there's that. So I have that in the background. Shout out to mm-hmm. everyone who gave questions. One question I didn't get asked, and I know you've been, I'm sure you've been asked this before, but Akiva, people know you have plenty of money. How much mm-hmm. money do you have exactly? And are you going to invest it in the next, in the future iterations of Pod Friends? Like, we could have can multiple I, camera angles. Like yeah. Really can I tell that. you the origin of the plenty of money thing? Because it's actually kind of depressing. Here's, okay, here's the thing. I yeah. want to hear it, but mm-hmm. I also feel like, so as someone who has listened to her nap from the beginning, like, mm-hmm. I will probably ask you questions and be like, Akiva, I've heard you say this before. And I've completely mm-hmm. forgotten. So I've forgotten more of your stories i'm proud to say i've forgotten more of your stories than i've heard Mm -hmm. over the last several years 
what is the origin of the plenty of money story? Okay. And so you and I appreciate you dodging the question about how much well, money. Yeah. Can, well, maybe I'll get to it, but let me. Oh. Can, should, should I start from the beginning a little bit? And give you a little life background because uh, yeah, it's sort of that that story sort of gets there in in the, in the middle. Let's go. Um, so I grow up on Long Island, very idyllic mm-hmm. childhood. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, I had I had one younger sister, and it was me and my parents. Very a nice, quiet house. Really, you know, nothing. No, like major earth shattering events. It, great childhood. Was very happy. Super into sports. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then late, as I was like finishing up high school, my parents had two more kids. So I have three younger siblings. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had three girls. Um, but yeah, other than but so like yeah yeah. So I have a sister who's in college now. I'm 18 years older than her. Yeah. But a very very sort of like normal childhood. The the only thing that would maybe look different from the outside is that we're modern Orthodox Jews. We are or, we're Orthodox Jews, so mm-hmm. we've got a lot of you know w- what would look to the outside like rules and regulations and things like we keep mm-hmm. Shabbat and I don't you know uh, use the internet or 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 drive and things like that from mm-hmm. Friday late Friday afternoon to 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 sat you know basically Friday night Saturday night yeah um and and the community I grew up in was mostly people like me mm-hmm. um. Uh, and, uh, you know, after after high school, I go uh, on a gap year, which was ba- basically everyone sort of in my circle did. You go on a gap year yeah. to Israel to study for a year, mm-hmm. came back, immediately uh, met a lady. And um, and so I got married at at 20. Yes, yes, yes. So you've been married. Eight, have you? Are you? Is that 18, 18, 18 years? years. Yes, 18 oh, years. That. Wow. Yes, yes. I've been married 18 years. So you married into money? No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Uh, that's not the story. Um, but yeah, so so I was this like pretty immature 20 year old. But um, but yeah, long story short, I get married at 20 as I'm with two years left to go to college. Um, finish college. Mm-hmm. And then it was then I was, you know, I, again, I was still like I was married. I had a child at the very end of college, which is weird. Like, it's very weird going yeah. to your college professors and being like, hey, like, I know the final is on the fifth. But uh, like, I well, that's like when my wife is due. <laughs> what? <laughs> and it's like, yeah. And it was so actually interesting um, seeing the responses. I, I talked about this a lot recently. Mm-hmm. Because now that I've been in the workforce for like a, a lot of years and I feel like most of the time like you'll you'll be nervous to like hey can i have this day off or like yeah hey we have a family emergency and you're usually met with empathy right like Mm -hmm. most of the time you were met or like reason like maybe it's like oh you know that screws up my thing but like nobody's ever like you if you don't you know show up on tuesday you're fired or or you know yeah you know you're you're putting put on a performance plan plan but in college i feel like professors are a little bit like like uh and which which sort of screwed me up a little bit for the for the real world like some of the professors were like, I don't care. You could do the, the paper this summer. It's amazing. You're having a kid. Congratulations. Some are like, well, if you're not there, you just fail. And like, you could, you know, like you'll take the test, uh, you know, you take this class again next semester or something. You won't graduate. It was fascinating yeah. seeing like four or five different professors, like range of responses. And I'll just say as a side note with that, that there was uh, just to validate what you're saying. I went to college here where, here where I live in Washington, D.C. You go to GW? At GW, the George Washington University, mm-hmm. aka sure. the the GW in the Matt Scott, GW. the Colonials, the Colonials, uh, or the, well, no longer the Colonials, but that's a whole other. Story oh, I didn't know. Problematic okay, name changes. No, mm-hmm. I mean they don't have an official mascot name right now because they're changing wow. it. Yeah, we have a we have a huge problem with that actually in the DC area of like needing to change our sports team and mascot names. But you know, it's like it's interesting because like there was one class I had senior year. It was people presenting in a marketing class, whatever. Joe Biden was on campus. One of my friends who was the student body president was like, Matt, I have an extra ticket. If you want to come meet the vice president of the of the country, future president of the country. Mm-hmm. And I he knew your to friend my knew he's going to be the future president. Look, uh, no, not at the time. But I mean, it, 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 it panned out. It worked out. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so I turned to my professors right there. I'm like, hey, I know that I'm sitting here watching these presentations. Could I go to, the, to meet the vice president, future president? And she was like, no, no, unless you want to fail this class or unless oh. you want to get points taken off your grade. Oh, so I never went to meet him. So. I mean, I have never, I don't know about you, I've never met a president. No. 
No, I've never I, been, actually, I've never I been in the room. You have? I who? have. I have. Obama? Uh, President Lynn? Obama. President Obama. Okay. Uh, I don't think President Clinton. I've, uh, yeah, I've been in the room room with certain presidents. I don't you think I've ever have, been in the though. room with a president. Wow. Look at, I'm, I'm surprised. So. You've, lived, I mean, a, you've lived a lot to... of life. But yeah, I feel... But I, I don't know. DC, I guess. Well, I guess I guess not. Yeah, and honestly, uh, I, I I didn't want to meet meet them. I just want to avoid, you know, it's just like run, run away in the other direction for most presidents. I don't know. There's there's something. Actually, Obama was uh, very soft hands, uh, by the way. Oh, really? But, yeah, very soft hands. They yeah. Did he make I, eye contact? I, uh, I don't I don't remember the eye contact. I was I was sobbing in the in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. Uh, sadly, I almost met uh, a president because Hillary Clinton. For some bizarre reason, came to my high school. Um, I we were like a pretty small and also like young, and by young I mean there weren't a lot of like kids mm-hmm. who were older than like their year because it was such uh-huh. a small school or whatever. So I think there was like almost maybe like maybe there were four kids in the school who were eligible to vote. She was running for Senate Skip. for like yeah. for New York State Senate at the time, right? Yeah, and she came to, and it ended up just be instead of a speech, it got downgraded to like a photo op. Um. With, with the four, kids. just the four kids who could vote. No, it was I think with the um, with the uh, principals and the um, the like student body presidents and the school's uh, maintenance worker, the school's janitor. And I remember I'm... actually thinking, like, we treat this guy nicely. I feel like he feels like, and and no irony here. Like he felt at the time, like if there's a, like this important picture, I'm like in the top ten here. I'm coming into the picture. Um, I agree. Yeah, he is. He is in the picture with like the with the principals and the and like the two like student body presidents. So at the you know, so not did not meet a president, but um, came came pretty close. So I I have to ask. I, I interrupted your story. You're telling me where the plenty of money came. Yeah. So I'm not sure if you, like you were. So we're in class. You're you're they're like you're gonna fail, Akiva. You can't have kids. Like you need to be an absentee dad just to right. pass this course. Yeah. Not uh, even but, an absolute dad, like, missed the birth. Forget It wasn't like you can't change his diaper. It was like you can't be there when the baby's <laughs> born. <laughs> How does this – what does this have to do with money? What does this have to do with the plenty of money? Well, I was just going to – because I think there's no context to the story unless I give you a little <laughs> bit of my life story. Okay. But – and we're not – I'll be honest. We're not even almost there. But the um, – <laughs> the... it, it doesn't seem – it doesn't seem like it, believe it or not. Um. The actually, when the first uh, my first my daughter was a C section, and uh, we did have a conversation with the OBGYN about like uh, like hey, if we like have this baby on January first, then uh, like I don't have a final that day because it's New Year's or the next day, and uh, that's and it ended up we had for medical reasons we had it that day, but uh, she was born on January first. Nice. Um, so yeah, so I I finish college. And even though I'm, I have a wife uh, who's still in, who's in graduate school and a daughter, I have like Check. no okay. idea what I want to do. None. Mm-hmm. Like less than all of my friends, even though I have, you know, probably more responsibilities than most of them. And uh, so I, I don't know, like what I'm going to do. And and I, I I'm like half heartedly sending out resumes, but I'm not really I was like sort of faking it, like going to like mm-hmm. the, the like the school library and like but I, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And it was like. I would just like apply to companies I'd heard of, but I had like, I'm sure an atrocious resume and I hadn't done any sort of like, I don't know, anything interesting like internships or, and so like, there was no reason to like think I would get any of these jobs. And then one day um, my dad calls me and he says, uh, Hey, like my dad is a, is a teacher. As I mentioned mm-hmm. before, there was a, uh, a, a school for special needs children, uh, really for um, children on the autism spectrum, like attached mm-hmm. to his school. And he said, like, one of the teachers just got hurt. Why don't you come, like, teach there? And I had no teaching experience, but I had met my wife at a camp for children with special needs. So I had a lot of experience with, like, special needs population, working with them day to day. Like, you're their parents for the summer at this camp. It's a sleepaway camp. Yeah. You know, you are fully responsible for them. Mm-hmm. So I, I wasn't a teacher, but I went there and, like, they thought I was pretty decent. And, they, you know, once the guy came back, they hired me full time to, like, a teaching position and i stayed there for two years um and then uh then i i went to a a a school a different school where i was a high school english teacher for two years um 
And I really liked it. I love teaching. I like the kids. I didn't really like dealing with the parents and I hated dealing with the administration, like just uh-huh. as much as dealing with the college professors. Yeah. Um, and then one day they like stopped paying us. Oh, they well, they started bouncing <laughs> checks. <laughs> I'm not I'm not surprised that that's a thing that would happen to teachers. I just feel like they would. They it was that a small probably happens school. more than we know. It was a small private school. I was the only English teacher, like all four grades. I was like the one English teacher. Oh. It was like one class per grade. Very small. Yeah. And they started bouncing checks. And it was one of those things where I wanted to quit. But um, <laughs> like if you quit, you're like they're, they're, you're the last person who's going to get paid now. You're like the lowest. Yeah. You know, other teachers were getting bounced checks, too. I remember one teacher opened up an account. I don't remember what their bank was, but it wasn't like one of the major. It wasn't like Citibank. It was like a smaller bank mm-hmm. nearby the school. And like he opened up an account there because it, if you have it the same account like checking account as the account they're paying from like they can see what's your what's the balances they won't bounce the check right you could always go and like hey will this check actually clear uh but i was like too like lazy and stupid to do that so i didn't i i didn't do that but yes they bounced they bounced uh uh, a bunch of checks to me and uh and then one day the school closed they 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 said like hey this is the last this is going to be the last two months this is like it was april they're like all right in june like that's it School year's mm-hmm. over. The school's going to close. And I was like, well, I like being a teacher, but it's, you know, by, by this point, it was maybe like May 1st or something. It's like, it's yeah, all the good jobs are taken for next year. It's very late in the game to start looking for like a teaching job next year. So that mm-hmm. was the end of my teaching career. Uh, and then P.S. They still owe me six thousand three hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> that They never paid me. <laughs> um, yeah, I never I, I never got that money. So then so now I. I have no idea what I want to do. I, I at the time I had also started. Um, I had also started um, working for NBC as mm-hmm. on on Sunday Night football on football night in America as like a stats guy, a researcher. Right. So that was very fun. It's live television, extremely cool. You're working with like the talent, and you're you know writing words every Sunday that are being read on TV by. Mm-hmm. Then it was Dan Patrick and Keith Olbermann and. Uh, it was extremely cool and it's fast paced and you're there for 12 hours on Sunday. So it was like a weird thing where I was like teaching during the week at this yeah. failing school, mm-hmm. you know, and they were like, like bouncing checks left and right. One time I got paid in cash when they like they <laughs> knew the checks wouldn't clear. The principal handed me a thousand dollars in cash uh. <laughs> <laughs> just in an envelope. And a thousand was it in hundreds? I'm just I, curious. Like I, it 20s, had to be because otherwise it would be singles. that would be very thick. I don't remember. That I mean, it's more like impressive. My, that wasn't my paycheck. It was a random amount of money, you know. Um, I mean, better than so. Nothing. So better it was weird. Nothing. I was like on, on like during the week I was at like the world's most failing school, and then on the weekends I was working on like the number one show on television. But like. You know, like barely, you know, I was like barely getting by. I was like, this is like, uh, you know, <laughs> this is like a not not a tenable situation. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, this is that that's that's the plenty of money is it's the. No, I'm not even close. Still <laughs> I'm not even close. <laughs> I keep going. Keep that's going. At I'm the like, end of the podcast. That's going to be at the end. I'm like, I OK, wait. So, OK. Wait, so, uh, OK, where you are in this story, maybe we'll get we'll get back to we'll get to we'll okay. get back to it. Yes. So yes. where you are in the story, you know, you're yes. a teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, that was the thing. Like, would you. So it sounds like other than the pay, like, how did you yeah. like teaching? Would you teach again? Like, is that something where. And and maybe this is kind of as we continue with this story, because at this point, you're still a teacher in the context yeah. of the story. So I think uh, that's that was really the end of my teaching career. I think I would not teach anymore. I um, I really like teaching. I thought I was pretty mm-hmm. good at giving over the material in an interesting way. I was very bad at classroom management. Uh, it wasn't mm-hmm. really my strength. I'm really more. And I think this is also why I wouldn't be a good accountant. I'm more of like an ideas guy and I will work very hard, but I'm, I'm more of a home runs and strikeouts guy. And I think Famously. to be a teach to be a teacher and I'm, I'm not saying I hit a lot of home runs, but like the, but I might strike out a lot the, to be a teacher and certainly to be an accountant more than most other jobs. Like you have to just like the, you, it, you're not supposed to be screwing up, like striking out. You should be hitting singles and doubles. You know, it, nobody's mm-hmm. ever like, Hey, like I just got audited, and like the FBI is coming, the uh, the uh, IRS is coming after me, and I'll be like, yeah, but I oh like crushed this other guy's taxes. You know what I mean? I did such a great job with it. 
you you sort of just want to like <laughs> get 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 wins on all of them but that's not really my i don't think that's my mo i feel like um you know like i'm more of like a, 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 a you know i want to be in a job where it's like okay this is a great idea that worked and this didn't and you know so <laughs> i don't think i'd be a great teacher because i think the the lows were kind of low. I wasn't good. There were certain things, aspects of the job I wasn't good at or didn't enjoy that I think. Um, and also I was an English teacher and, and uh, you know, spoiler, I now live in a country where that's not the main language and it's not really as, wouldn't be as good of a job. It would be like, uh, you know, a, a once a day type. It, it wouldn't be serious. So short answer. Uh, I was going to no. well, I guess, yeah, that's a very different, it would be a very different type of English teaching, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, but also maybe uh, lucrative. Maybe, maybe that's. I don't know if that's the the goal at the end of the day. But you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. If there's something there. Don't limit your possibilities. You could be. An I'm not saying never, again. but I, I, I think I did it. I really feel like uh, <laughs> the the two years I spent teaching at the school for children with special needs, even though again the kids yeah. were really wonderful, every day coming in and dealing with the administration was like five years of like i mean i've been in yeah. i've worked in every type of company i've worked at nonprofits, mm -hmm. uh television shows um uh, like fast-paced startups mm -hmm. uh like fortune 500 company and a, and and you know a school yeah that, <laughs> you think like oh. tv people are depicted as like sort of kind of like conniving sometimes or like um before well, yeah before, before he lost his mind and became like a monster Adam Carolla, who was like one of the early podcasters, used to say <laughs> yeah. when he worked in radio and television, you say like people, radio executives are stupid and evil and television exec executives are smart and evil. Um, mm. and I never worked that, in radio, it, but, <laughs> but but I never found that. I felt like everyone is super nice and I have all these um, like I, I when I work on the Olympics. Uh, spoiler for like, oh you know, a few minutes. I, I, I was I don't know if we could say the, the Olympics. I thought yeah, yeah, you were going to just say the yeah, O word. Like, uh, no, that's just a joke because Rob doesn't I like can, the Olympics. I, I the, could the, I could the, I could censor it. I could uh, just no, bleep no, it out. No, no. <laughs> so what, like I can't work from Friday night to Saturday night, and every other person in the whole company is working seven days a week because it's only sixteen mm -hmm. days. You know, plus the prep time, and no, you know they don't. Nobody ever said anything, and they're very accommodating. Like people are incredibly accommodating um in again in in this like billion dollar industry but in this school where the stakes i mean the stakes of the children's education were high but the stakes of like that like teacher drama was yeah. very low uh and it was, you know so it, it, that that sort of thing like uh oh, the hair that i'm missing is mostly <laughs> from teaching <laughs> that's when i started losing my hair Damn. um well so, look. yeah yeah, I mean, it's like it's look, I, I and also I, I feel like with teaching, especially like it's not, you know, it's not an easy thing to do mm -hmm. uh, as it is. And, uh, you know, you really have to be passionate and committed to it. I know way too many teachers who taught for a few years, you know, out of college, for example, and then, you know, they just burnt out, whether it's like yeah. the pay which mm -hmm. isn't even necessarily the worst part but like how they're being treated maybe they're i mean i don't know if i know anyone who hasn't been paid or who's waiting on their paychecks as yeah teacher. no i think that's but, pretty yeah. rare but, but okay. you know what there's a lot of there's a lot of barriers for that too, there's so a lot of burnout for sure and supposedly yeah. it's gotten much worse i'm not in the industry anymore but people are i think more burned out well, now yeah. post covid for sure yeah with the pandemic and everything so, and so yeah yeah please keep going so i don't I mean, know what i'm gonna do but also sort of along these same lines, um, we were living we, – I went to college in Upper Manhattan in Washington mm -hmm. Heights. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I stayed there with my wife and uh, daughter and then eventually second daughter. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't where we want – we wanted, you know, to, uh, we were, you know, buy a house and set, set down roots and wherever. And we looked in Queens and we – agreed on a place in queens and then that fell through and and we weren't sure we wanted to live and my wife is from florida and she didn't really like new york and i didn't want to live in florida at all Fair now, enough. florida's a little different now in our world like the modern Orthodox jewish world but it was very small then it wasn't like uh -huh. um uh you know it, 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 we're a very community-based people and like the bigger the community mm -hmm. uh you know like of, of your surroundings like the more yeah uh, uh, synagogue options you'll have, and school and school options you'll have, and restaurant, you know, kosher restaurant, and, mm -hmm. and, and and then there's a million different things. And and I didn't want to move to Florida. She really was not happy in New York at all. Uh, she finished her schooling, and then so we 
we're like, well, we're not going to move to New York. We're not going to move to Florida. So we ended up deciding to move to Israel. Uh, and they say that it's very hard to move um, to a, a country with, ha with the, you know, it speaks a different language mm -hmm. once your child's in grade school. So we sort of said, OK, we're going to move before Ella, our oldest daughter, is in first mm -hmm. grade which is 2012. So that's it's the sort of the school collapses. This all happens like in the same thing. It was like, okay, this is like a sign. Let's like, you know, go on a new adventure and, and, and do something else. Wow. Wow. Well, I mean, just even on that note, like what was it like moving to Israel with your, obviously packing up everything, packing up your life. Uh, and, and you mentioned like, obviously visiting, visiting there at different points, but like, what was that like? Uh, just moving you and your family um, and yeah, just to start there, like that, that's a pr pretty big, pretty big move. And I also wonder like what the differences are um, even just in terms of like keeping kosher in mm -hmm. Israel versus in the U S did you mm -hmm. adapt in any way? So, so yeah. curious about that, that journey. Yeah. Um, so it is a huge move. First of all, my parents, my, uh, my grandfather, my three sisters, their kids, all of my friends lived in the U.S., you know, mo almost mm -hmm. all of them in the New York, New Jersey area. So mm -hmm. I'm moving away from everybody I know. I had maybe casual. It's not super uncommon for people from our world, quote unquote, to move to Israel. But um, some people stay like after their gap year. And then some yeah. people maybe come when they're more established in their 30s. But we didn't really have a friend group moving in um so it's a big deal like you're moving away and not just away it's not like moving to chicago uh no. which is a, would be a big deal too this is you know over six thousand miles away it's a it's it's a 12-hour flight yeah. like there's times i want to come back for you know just for a, a sporting event or you know to see a relative or for two days and right. it's just it, you know you lose a day on the commute uh, you actually when you fly there it's not a big deal i'll sometimes go to work yeah finish Damn. work go to the airport sleep on the plane and then wow. you you get get in jfk at 5 30 in the morning and it's like a work day it's like all right i'll be in meetings by seven Oof. Uh, but the way back it doesn't work like that because you lose the time so you lose like you have to take a day off or maybe two days off just to fly back um so it's far like it's not it's it's not easy and it's a, probably the flights are you know something in the range of a thousand dollars which if you have a big family mm -hmm. can it really add up mm -hmm. um so it, it you know it's a big deal they they some group of people come and they look at your uh they look at your apartment and they they like all right this is like you need a, a, a what they call a lift like a, basically the you know a giant truck full of stuff and like these are all your worldly possessions that are going to be taken on a a, a, a ship you know and you'll you'll see them in a couple months if you're lucky i think our our oven didn't show didn't show up when the, the oh my gosh when the lift came and they're like oh, i guess i'll be on the next one we're like they ship the weeks? oven you ship the oven well, you, because it's like different, uh, like electricity and stuff. Like yeah, they have stuff, but but also like it's easier to get um, like certain appliances, higher quality appliances in New York City than it is in the Middle East. And so uh, it's like they said, you know, they they send them uh, you like get the different voltage or whatever. Not my not really my strength knowing about this stuff, but <laughs> same <laughs> anyway. But yeah, they forgot the oven. So, yeah, it's a huge deal. Um, I finished. I worked on the, the London 2012 Olympics for NBC. Mm -hmm. They ended on Sunday, August 12th. We had like a wrap party. I probably yeah. got home at like midnight. Um, and then I moved to uh, halfway across the world at 10 a.m. <laughs> 10 hours later. So it was why? Like, why? This part of my life, well, I didn't, I had no say in when the Olympics were. No, like, I no. mean, <laughs> you have to move the next day. Well, the, my daughter had to start school and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we had to. Your daughter could have been a day, like, just show up on day two. That's all I'm That's saying. That's hard. New language, first grade, day two. I showed up I guess late, so. eighth grade, and it was with the same group of kids. I showed up, yeah. like, a week late because I went to uh, La Jolla, California for my mm -hmm. cousin's bar mitzvah. And I remember the whole year thing, like, hey, he doesn't like me. I'm the kid who wasn't there the first week. He doesn't really know me. Fair enough. <laughs> the, the Except like the main then, again, then again, I think you kind of have an, an edge, you know? They're like, oh, okay, I'm sick and tired of all these other kids. Now I'm getting something fresh, <laughs> yeah, something like, oh, new. There's one more yeah. of these idiots. <laughs> yeah, no, like Akiva. There's honestly, it's showing up fashionably late to school, mm. you know, a day late, a few days late. That could be a game changer in a good way. Yes. So, you know, it's very, it was very disorienting and it's yes. a new culture, new language. Um, uh, everyone else in this family speaks uh, really fluent Hebrew. My Hebrew is not as fluent. 
Uh, mm -hmm. That's then and even now. I like started learning the language and went to uh, like these language classes that they have for immigrants. Um, but then I immediately uh, got a job at a tech startup and started doing some other things. And and like I, you know, just like was working in English every day. And yeah. Uh, so I, the the real like sort of um, uh, you know like becoming like a local never never really happened. All my friends are like people who will watch football with me and mm -hmm. you know <laughs> and like talk about sports or like American pop culture and stuff. So I have like a little bit of a, a, an American bubble here, you know. I I will and Canadian say, and British. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Of course, you have to work in the Canadians and the Brits. Shout out to the Canadians. I'm sure many mm -hmm. Canadians are listening to this episode. You, I know I you have a lot of Canadian RGP, fans. Yes. Yeah, basically. And that makes sense that there's that bubble because you you were accused by one listener of uh, -oh. uh of well it, it it feeling like you don't live in Israel. Do you do you feel like you live in Israel? That's I mean I think that's probably like uh uh uh. uh I don't know who, but like a, a, a person who's, who lives here gatekeeping, like one silly. Oh thing. yeah, one hundred percent. When you when you um, are on a microphone like six or seven hours a week, mm -hmm. and you're like trying to say something interesting, like everything I'm trying, everything I'm saying is true, and like trying to be honest, but like also like say things that are maybe not boring. Like I'm sure I get a lot of things wrong. <laughs> You know, Look. like you, like you know what I mean. Like you say, if you're on, yeah. if you're if you're speaking enough, like you're bound to make a lot of mistakes. And then people like to harp on the mistakes. Like, how come? I don't know. How come you said male chickens lay eggs? I don't know. I don't. I just. I was like speaking quickly, and I. <laughs> I mean, you. Uh, I, I will say. I will say yeah. to in in defense, or not not even in defense of you. I feel like uh, I want to defend you with this. And I think that's fair. when you're, rec when you're recording that much or, or saying that much between all of the many podcasts that you have, um, it's like easy to get things wrong, easy to be up, but also Kiva, you do take some big swings. Like you really, you well, really that's what I'm talking about. You want to take, you're brave. Big swings. You're brave. Um, Where does that bravery come from? I, I don't think I'm brave. I think I'm kind of a coward no. in real life. I, I definitely, <laughs> I'm I'm con I'm conflict avoidant for sure. Um there. so I but I I don't think it's bravery. I'll tell you what what if I'm good at anything in podcasting and I don't know if I am. Other than I think one is maybe having good ideas. I think sometimes I have good ideas. Mm -hmm. Um not that's not as, as a podcast. That's almost like as a bigger picture like producer type thing. Right. But then it's like I think I'm willing to be the to play the dummy. You know what I mean? I'm willing to be yeah. like the bad guy or like so I, I, w I won't ever say anything that's fake but like sometimes i'll be like oh i know this is gonna be wrong but uh, you know it's like uh, but this is what i believe so I'll, I'll, i'm fine getting dunked on for saying this i think like more people should be willing to be like mm. are you the straight man or woman or yeah or like you know or yeah so like i think it's i think it's funny to be um not a villain i don't think it's fun to be a villain um but i think it's funny to be like uh uh you know like clowned on sometimes it's fine well i mean i think that that's like that's that's the thing and it's interesting that we've kind of rounded the corner to that point because there's definitely uh a, i always think of it and i was just interviewing someone else uh this past week and actually um uh, it came out so uh kevin jacobs from big brother mm. uh, canada and which I, I as i don't know why i feel the need to say this now didn't watch i didn't watch big brother canada 10 and i don't watch big brother canada but I, I caught up in him and it was really interesting because he's this villain character, not even perceived as a, much of a villain by the fan base, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, or at least by the super fans, but definitely a villain character. And so we were talking about the character of Kevin versus the person, which I think that's kind of what Pod Friends is about. And I am curious, like, how do you feel about uh, your perception or your your reception or character? I don't really think about. I don't think that's for me. To, that's for other people to decide and think about. I don't mm. really think about that at all. Um, well, but I, I think it's you know don't you know basically it comes down to don't take yourself too seriously. Uh, most mm -hmm. of the podcasts I do are not heavily edited. Ali does sometimes uh, yeah. do a very good job of editing NGOG, but a lot of times the podcasts, especially thirty two fans that I do, which is my um do you ever think about like introducing like i, I have this I've, I've asked this question to a lot of people matt Please. so we're on this like larger network of podcasters mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. of podcasts and it, yeah. is a, it is a very popular network however this show is on youtube anyone yeah. can listen to it it has mm -hmm. thousands of views people you know ostensibly 
somewhere between one and a number higher than one percentage of people will listen to this show. Yeah. And sometimes, and this is nothing you do. I, I do this and I think all of us do this. Is like we assume that everyone out there knows all these like fringe characters that we bring up. No. All the time. Yeah. It's like maybe I should explain. I know we're like a half hour in. Maybe I should explain who I am. I'm not a well-known person at all. You know? Well, I mean, I think that the, I, I think that that's uh, along the way, and this is the beauty of it. Like, you know, people are getting to know you just by mm -hmm. how you dive in, just by kind of being, telling your story, talking mm -hmm. about everything you've talked through. So the, the piece together, but also but do you think about that at all? Like, like oh, are we too insular sometimes? Like, because I said thirty-two fans, and I thought, oh, there's probably lots of people listening who don't know what that is. You I know. Think I think to say, you know, I do think to some extent it's a show, it's a podcast. Yeah, if it's, it's just about I mean, sports. That's all you need if, to know. Yeah, but, uh... a sports podcast. It's like, I, I do think, you know, to different degrees, definitely we can be. I think that for the most part, like when I think of the wrestling podcast that we do, me and Mari, like mm -hmm. with wrestling wrap up. Uh, cause I need to, I need to explain, uh, that's, that's the show. Well, you, it, it's which, literally called wrestling podcast. It's you called the it's wrestling wrap, wrap up. up. Yeah. Uh, wrestling. That's very, yeah. That's in there. So yeah. But it's like Mario. Wait, is it back like college wrestling things. or, or what? WWE? Co no, it's a joke. Uh, you have to listen to find <laughs> out. Okay. Um, it could be about college wrestling. If WWE gets, if we decide mm -hmm. to cancel WWE, then maybe we'll have mm -hmm. to watch Olympic wrestling, college wrestling. Who mm -hmm. knows? We could go back and watch like all of the best Olympic wrestling performances. Uh, so shout out, uh, Roland uh, Gardner, uh, former coworker. I mean, we'll see. Look, uh, yeah, yeah. shout out, shout out. And you know what? I will say so, uh, but I do think like yeah, we are really in our own bubble at times. But I and I always I. <laughs> I don't always say, but I have been saying to people, including Mike Bloom, like Pod Friends is the second most uh, self-referential mm -hmm. podcast or meta podcast in the Rob is a podcast network universe behind Rob and Akiva need a podcast. And you know what? Sometimes people just need that like this, uh, like it's for the people who are inside of the community yeah. and not mm -hmm. outside. Like, I don't think that I mean, I would love if people outside of the RHAP community are listening, but it's either going to be the people who are in the community, which is who it's for, or people who know the people who are being featured mm -hmm. in little tune. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay with that. part of it. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah and you know what? And, then I'll... Mm -hmm. and you know what? Akiva, Google, Google.com is right there for people. It's true. I don't know if that'll help with me, but it's possible. It, um, it will. I think it might. It I, could. I, yeah. That's uh, with, with Robin Akiva need a podcast. I think we sort of, subconsciously made that choice where mm -hmm. it's funnier to like we have x number of fans let's go on this journey with them and yeah you know it, our goal was not to like make the most popular thing in the world it's like make something that uh right. some people really like and so or love or love for sure and then it's like okay we're fine you know never gaining another new fan as long as we keep like most of the old ones we have um at, at, at the sense of like uh, you know, not ins not insulting the listeners' intelligence, like keeping sort of growing this like world with different people, and and um, you know, having inside jokes and and switching up mm -hmm. the inside jokes, but like sort of you know trying to like create this little universe, uh, a weird little universe versus like being more broad. Um, but yeah, definitely, if anybody's guilty of it, I am in terms of like, of course, everyone. I won't mention a person because then it would make it seem like they're particularly no name names, call but, people no, no, out. No, no. <laughs> no, I won't. But um. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I think it is, um, yeah, it is funny that we do that, but also it's like, we, you know, ultimately Rob has built this like world for us and it is like this weird, it's almost like, I don't know what to compare it to. There's not really like, maybe like sort of Howard Stern in its heyday, but like much more friendly and open. You know what I mean? That there's like characters and there's, yeah, um, yeah. 100%. Almost like we all live near each other. I think if it was like 10 years ago, we should have all like. <laughs> live near each other if we, everyone was like in their 20s which Maybe like we, get are, like, we get a hype house and then a lot of the... hype house you yeah know, something like that and it's like turn it into its own reality show you know what i mean but there oh, isn't no. a lot of drama or things like that but i do think like rob has created this universe and and uh you know it's like fun to be in the universe and ultimately like we're just playing in his like uh you know with his toys or whatever but it's like the th there is like this uh um like closeness of like even people i've never met or i've met once in a you know yeah. at an event where i also met 200 other people mm -hmm. uh and at least one of us was drunk or something like 
there is like a bond of like you know even <laughs> yeah. um you know of uh, you're like oh i've seen that name um yeah uh you know oh i didn't know that person but like uh uh you know uh, like I've seen that name 200 times. There is like a weird, uh, not weird, but there is sort of a bond in in, in the community. And I, I've yeah. been around for a long time at this point. Like there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of names like built up in my head or whatever. Well, you know, I, I can imagine. And just even to like give uh, give credit to, well, I mean, I don't think you're not giving credit to, to Rob as a podcast for this, Rob. But I think that there's always something about like knowing who, who the audience is for any particular thing. So for the Big Brother podcast, wider audience. Sure, sure, sure. You explain the details. There's a way of like, talking about that. Renap, it's for the com- pod friends. It's for the community. It's like, right. you know who it's for. You know who you're looping in. And I think the cool thing about like, uh, well, it, it, about this about the community in terms of the live events and live shows and meeting is like, yeah, like we should just have time to connect with each other. And it's, I think back to the, uh, the, um, RHAP live event in New York where I'm like, what is like, what's Akiva's here? What's Akiva doing? And I remember, uh, drunkenly, I'm, I'm sure, uh, quite so just, Oh my God, Akiva. And just you were very like nice. seeing you, 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 were, I, you were very nice. I, I, I yeah, I, I, I'm, I, uh, <laughs> Thank you. I don't know how to respond to that. Thank you. I appreciate that. I yeah. I, I was joking on a recent pod friends that um that I'm a huge asshole, but uh no, it's a uh, I don't. I think I I'm probably no. This probably and this show. Enough. What if That's what if I but a version of the show Ooh. called Pod Enemies? Have you? Oh, about I want that. that. Oh, I have like thought all about of that. your haters. Maybe like my like haters. Season. What people you oh. hate? Not people. I mean, if someone hates you, if someone like sends you, then don't do this just to get on the show, people. People but, like, I hate. It's yeah. It was like people not not hate. Hate is a very strong word. But like maybe who? some. I don't know. Maybe there's someone out there. You have a. I thought of like. I, <laughs> I like this idea. I'm trying of to like, get you into trouble. I have. I know. Yeah, I have a couple people in my life. They're. I guess they're mm-hmm. not really in my life so much anymore. I right. I've thought to myself, and this is such a narcissistic, insane thought. <laughs> but I thought like it would be so fun to just like have them on a podcast and like hash out a relationship. I don't want to do it on the phone. I don't want to have this conversation. You know, in real life. Yeah. I, I had the idea once. I was like, "What if the what? What if there was a podcast where I like spoke to like it was a series that I spoke to, like every single person from my high school class, and like we like I don't know like I don't know I don't know there would be no point nobody would care but it was like uh, you know I don't I don't know I, I like uh, the idea of sort of like uncovering like yeah, sort of like solving old drama or things like that. So really? pod enemies maybe maybe as a one off no, pod we'll, enemies would work for you but no you might not no have as a, as a one off no 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 <laughs> I want the whole series once I get through pod friends then I'll have people mm-hmm. on again and it'll just be like it'll be Mia's probably the moderator of the mm-hmm. conversation ah okay so enemies. you're finding maybe two people who don't like yes. each other and you're sort of being the therapist I like that Matt I yeah I I like that too I like that too yeah I just would like to. I, I think I could help work through the drama and the tension between mm-hmm. folks. And you know what? I mean, I, I, if anyone's, if any podcasters are listening and want to suggest enemies that they have, that they'd mm-hmm. love to be on a podcast with, because what I could do Akiva is mm-hmm. like have, uh, obviously there's the person, it's kind of like a Jerry Springer type of setup. Yeah. A classy like Jerry the, Springer though. I ha- the class. Oh, sorry. The classy <laughs> Jerry Springer. See, I said, we're enemies. ideas people, you know, we're, we're, we are, we're we are. coming up with ideas for different podcasts on this. Well, I would have like one person who knows what's going to happen. Cause they let me know who their enemy is. Oh, I'll invite oh. the enemy on mm. for an episode of pod friends, quote unquote, when it's actually mm-hmm. pod enemies. And I'll just oh, switch man. the like, you know, for the for the YouTube viewers, I'll just switch the branding. There's really one quick. problem. What's the There's problem? One problem? So you know, like Jerry, Jerry, Matt yeah. can't do it, and your last name I is also like, one syllable. Maddie, Matt, or Matt, like, are you okay Matt, being Scott, Matt, Scott, Matt, See, Scott, I, Matt, Scott, Matt, See, Scott. Matt, Scott. Matt, Scott. Say it, Matt Scott, a lot. It sounds like mascot. That's the only problem. I mean, it works though. He's like, is it Mister Man who's coming out? <laughs> it like it it's, it gives a sports vibe. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. It. Should I be an athlete, a pro athlete, Akiva? Yes. Yeah. Well, are, well. How about this? Are wrestlers, are WWE wrestlers, pro athletes, or are they just sports <sighs> entertainers? Why are you asking me this difficult, this very difficult question? They are sports entertainers. That is what they mm-hmm. officially. But they're incredibly are they athletic. I mean, maybe uh, Seth Rollins more athlete, they are athletic athletes. than a golfer, probably. Yeah. Yes. No, they are athletes. They are one hundred percent athletes. I'm not. 
prepared to say that pro wrestling is a sport, but they're athletes. Like they, and the thing is, most of them have athletic backgrounds. Otherwise, or even if it's like being a gymnast, being a yo a, a yogi. I don't know why yoga mm -hmm. came to mind, but yeah, yeah. It, is pro yoga football players. Some of them were failed football players. I mean, yeah, I think but, they are ultimately uh, at like. I mean, they are. Harlem, if the Harlem Globetrotters know they're going to win before the game, right? They're still <laughs> athletes, right? So it's the same thing. Just because the outcome them. is, don't just because the outcome is scripted doesn't mean that they're not pro athletes, right? They, it, I mean, you would know better than I would. That's I, I don't feel like know. That's more of a question for you. You're more of okay. the the sports. Well, Akiva, what do you think? Of person, Akiva, what do you think of the sports? Uh, uh, why why do you want to beat up Kyle Chandler? I know I don't. I we I it's I think it's a funny thing when we mention people. I think actors are like usually a lot shorter. Oh, so than now you're walking realize. back. I'm also Akiva. Short. No, I, I, I thought he was a little guy, so I said I could beat him up. Then I found <laughs> that he was much bigger than me, and I I take it back. I don't think I also like him. I think Friday Lights is great. I I'd, I'd love to rewatch it at some point. I don't want to rewatch it. I'd love for it to be like re imprinted in my brain. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. want to spend like you know sixty hours on it again. But um, yeah. So no, I have no problem with Kyle Chandler. Okay, but that's good so, to know. Yeah, Beef's so watched. I moved, <laughs> I moved to across the world <laughs> to get I away start from working. Him? No, not yes to escape the wrath, the potential wrath of Kyle Chandler. <laughs> and uh, I had actually started a podcast in while living in Manhattan with my friend Ari Gold, um, mm -hmm. called Thirty Two Fans, which was mm -hmm. the premise was uh 32 days before the nfl season we would speak to one fan of every team about half of them were our friends and the other half we'd find on the internet and we'd do a preview for 32 minutes each time of mm -hmm. um of uh each of the nfl teams and i thought that would be a cool way to preview the season nobody had really done anything like that yeah. now it probably seems like there's a thousand podcasts back then but it was a pretty early idea to do in 2009 mm -hmm. or whatever year we were right. doing it there weren't a lot of podcasts mm -hmm. uh and we did it but there was it was very hard to grow the podcast i didn't really have any like recognition the way we would send it out would be i would bcc all my friends who were into sports on an email every day that's how i would that's... send out the podcast it was like maybe like it. it would be twitter but i probably had 20 followers because it was the very beginning of twitter yeah. so it was not really and i don't even know if you could tweet links then i don't remember um no I, no yeah yeah i don't, I don't think, think you could, could. no so, maybe you could tweet links but you couldn't tweet photos at the time yeah 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 so it was it was impossible to distribute, and uh, you know n we weren't named, so there was no reason for anybody to listen mm -hmm. to it. So, uh, and uh, uh, we still did it, and I think like we did some good stuff. We did two seasons of it, uh, and we started like during the season, we'd be like, "Hey, let's talk about football each week, not just the you know previewing the teams for the season." But I sort of gave it up, moved here, was very busy, you know, creating like a whole new life for my for you know with my family and my two daughters. Mm -hmm. And um, but at some point, I guess we got settled in. And um, I was I had a lot of free time because like socially it was a little different here. We made friends, but I think like I wasn't going out to games or concerts or anything like that as much. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was watching a lot more TV and I started uh, watching the television show Survivor, which I had watched um, actually when I was here on, on a, a gap year. Mm -hmm. It was um, it was uh, season three of Survivor. And oh, wow. we were all excited. Ethan Zahn is like, oh, well, there's like a Jewish guy in Survivor. Yeah. Um, and we had a friend who we had no access to. We didn't have a television. And it was like a year or two before kids would have had laptops. Mm -hmm. Maybe like the richest kid in the school, like the fancy kid had had one laptop. But there was no way yeah. to like you. It wasn't like you could go on CBS.com or any sort of website and watch television shows really then. Mm -hmm. um, so we I, we I had a friend who. His mom would send him. She would she would tape Survivor every week. He was a huge Survivor fan. Mm -hmm. She would send him VHSs like three or four episodes at a time. And then we had another friend who started dating a kindergarten teacher. And now while we had no access to a VCR player in our like dorm, uh -huh. because she was a kindergarten teacher, of course she had access to one of those old school like push cart VC you know VHS players in the oh, no. kindergarten. So we yeah. used to go there at night. And we'd watch an episode or two at a time when it would come in the mail, which which, uh, <laughs> you know, would take many weeks, across, you know, sending it across the world. Um, and so was, sometimes we'd have to wait a few weeks till I find out. But it was very I mean, this feels like wait. I'm sure people who sound who are hearing the story think it yeah. happened in like the 80s and not, you know, in the early 2000s. But 
<laughs> Wait, so you you what you would watch Survivor in a kindergarten classroom? You just yeah, I mean at eleven o'clock at night. Yeah. I mean, where would you where would you sit though? Like in one of those <laughs> good little chairs? Or? I don't remember. I'm sure they had big kid chairs too, Matt. I don't remember. Okay. It's good. I haven't spoken Important to any questions. of these any of these people in many years, but that would be a funny question out of the blue to like text one of them like you know 18 years later 19 years later like where did we i like this isn't a fake memory like i know no i remember watching in the kindergarten a lot of times where did we where did we sit <laughs> were we i mean on it's the either floor? on the floor on like were the magical the baby chairs the magical carpet yeah. like the magical and, carpet yeah, I, i'm saying kindergarten it was probably a nursery school it was probably for two or three year olds based on oh. like, it wasn't you know it wasn't in That's another true. school it was like a standalone oh. building you know because at least so, a kindergartner, you have like a solid chair. Like there's some, like maybe a solid. Sure, wooden yeah. Chair. Some of those kids are big. Nursery Absolutely. school, you can't. Yeah, this was know. a nursery school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I there's no <laughs> word here separate for nursery and kindergarten. Really, it's just called. No. Common, but... Well, I was gonna say just uh, like if you could find pictures or even a kiva, if you could find like the smallest chair possible and then take a picture of you in the smallest chair possible. My wife will get so mad if if I sit in like, <laughs> one of the little kids' chairs. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's gonna break. But, hey. It has to, kids have to learn the lesson. Then. It's true. Gra yeah. Gravity. Gravity's I don't know important. what the lesson is. Okay, fine. Gravity. Yeah, guy, I figured it out. I figured so, it out already. So I was a very, uh, even living in New York, probably mm -hmm. by 2008, I was a very early adopter to podcasts. I, yeah. and there was like 12 podcasts out there, but I would like listen to all of them, even the ones I didn't like, just because that's mm -hmm. what they were. I was, again, I was probably looking for an outlet. Remember, when I moved across the world, there was no such thing as working uh, abroad, uh, right. remote. So I had to quit working on Sunday Football, Football Night in America, mm -hmm. and, and the Olympics, uh, which was a huge bummer because I had really just been getting started. I thought I was, you know, doing a good job. I really loved it. Mm, uh, yeah. So it really, you know, you, you like, it, again, it was like, the I think the number one show on TV or like number two, whatever, like, it's mm -hmm. not a great career move just to like just to quit it with like no other similar option. I didn't know what I was going to do coming here. Luckily, there's like a thriving high tech scene, so I was mm -hmm. able to get work. But um, so I was looking for a creative outlet because that was like I've always been a crazy sports fan. Mm -hmm. Um, that was always like my number one thing. If you knew me when I was eight and didn't know, I me, didn't and like, and then and then like met me again thirty years later. You'd be like, oh, you know, maybe you're more mature, but like you sort of have the same same interests. And I, this is how crazy I was. I just realized uh -huh. this the other day. There was a newspaper called The National. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody's interested, you could Google the sports the sports paper, newspaper, The National. There's a zillion oral histories and tons of information about it. But basically, it was it tried to be like the New York Times for sports, a daily newspaper. This is in 1990. Now, I remember the first issue, which was like regional and Patrick Ewing was on the cover. And my dad mm -hmm. uh, would like go to the store every morning and buy it for me because delivery was very poor, which ended up being why this, the paper only made it like 18 months or something. They had a lot uh -huh. of delivery issues and, and a lot of financial yeah. issues. They hired like all the big name sports writers in the country. They spent like a they lost like 100 million dollars. But they wow. um, but I remember reading it every day. And in my head, it was like, OK, I was a kid. And I look at when the paper was around and I realized, like, I started reading that whole paper cover to cover daily when I was six years old. The National <laughs> just it had to be based on like we have old copies like uh, that was when it was out and I was reading it. And I learned, uh, you know, multiplication of sevens based on touchdowns when I was in <laughs> kindergarten, you know, wow. and, and square roots and things like that. We would just know because so I was like always crazy into sports. My my grandfather bought jet season tickets. The week they drafted Joe Namath in December 1964, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and he still had them until he kept them until the pandemic. So, yeah. we, you know, I spent Sundays going to football games with my my grandfather, my father, and I could bring a friend. Mm -hmm. um, and that was like, you know, a very important part of, of my childhood and, and going to Mets games and going. Yeah. I would go on road trips. My dad and I, like for my senior in high school, we went to four baseball games in two days in four states. Like mm -hmm. or we went to like 49ers and. Raiders games in one afternoon uh, out in the Bay Area. Like we would we would, you know, do like sort of sports road trips as like our bonding experience. And, you know, nine, mm -hmm. you know, well, most of the conversations I've had in, in my life with my grandfather still are, are ultimately about sports. That's like a, a bonding thing. And I think I realize as I get older and I, as I get older as somebody yeah. who moved across the world, Matt, that mm -hmm. like it's such a 
the people who I've been able to stay in touch with, because there's a lot of people I've lost touch with because I haven't seen them in 10 years, mm -hmm. are basically the people who I'm still in fantasy leagues with or in yeah. group chats about uh, a sports team or or a sport. And I think there is such a, um, like, I you know, I, I like sports because it's just like, there's something in my, my soul that like loves sports and loves watching a game, yeah. and knowing the statistics and things like that and arguing about it. So it, it's zero percent of the reason why I like it, but it's sort of been in this added benefit where it's like very easy to keep up relationships with people. And then if someone's like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm just not into fantasy football anymore. I'm not going to be in our league. It's like, OK, well, we're never going to speak again. Like, adios. We had a good Damn. run. Yeah, no, until until it's like until next time. And yeah, there's a there's there's no next time. Like All that. these people I'll never speak to again. Like, hey, they just need to get back into the league. I don't know. I, it doesn't usually know. happen. I I've oh, I from what wow. I've seen in my life. It's morbid. If you fall out of love with something, you don't usually fall back fall back in, in, in love with it. But it's been amazing. And I have a couple friends who I've known my whole life who I'll speak to a couple times a week or every day. Yeah. And I don't know how many kids they have and what city they live in. But mm -hmm. I speak to them because we only talk about the Mets, you know, or we only talk yeah. about some random sport. Um, wow. And listen, I and some people will be like, well, that's not a real friendship. It's like, yeah, but I have real friendships also. But it's also like <laughs> nice to have like I went to a, a high school with our graduate class was 33 kids. So like mm -hmm. your friends are the people who were in the school with you because you didn't yeah. have any options. Then, uh -huh. I mean, this is a universal experience, right? You go to college and you meet people who have much oh, more. Yeah interest uh, aligned interest with you because you have options of hundreds or thousands of kids yeah and so and i and i still am friends with many of those people because like mm -hmm. geography is still like the main reason people become friends like you're more likely to become right. friends with your next door neighbor than anybody else or whatever like mm -hmm. but there, yeah there is like uh um i don't know there's like a bonding experience of uh of sort of sports and things like that that uh i, I guess uh can keep you together yeah, I mean, I wonder one thing about that, which is kind of a pivot, but it it this all reminds me of my interview with Jordan Kalish, where we were talking a lot about sports and something that he brought up that I thought was so interesting, and I, I still think it's interesting, um, just like looking at sports is where sports meet like Judaism, for instance, and people's mm -hmm. experience of that. Because like mm -hmm. I I think talking with Jordan, I might have given the example of like. Bill Goldberg, pro wrestler, Bill Goldberg, Jewish yeah. pro wrestler, Bill Goldberg being like mm -hmm. this um, stereotype defining character and performer and athlete and all these things. But I wonder, like, did I don't know, did you or have you ever thought about like where kind of your religion or your, your expression of religion meets uh, meets sports? Or did you like was there ever I, I don't know, have those two lines ever crossed in your head? It's an interesting question. I, the short answer is no. I mm -hmm. think, I mean, yeah, it's some, it's, it's a more fun if it's like, uh, Hey, did you know this guy on the Dodgers is Jewish, but it's not ultimately like, I'm not going to root for the Dodgers over the Mets, you know, if they, <laughs> so it ultimately doesn't yeah. really matter other than like a fun footnote. I think mm -hmm. you're not really represented in that world. There's plenty of worlds where yeah. you maybe would feel represented, but it's not, I, you don't view them as like, Hey, that's one of us. And also like, ultimately I'm like a subsection within a subsection. And like, to me, Mm, like the yeah. only way I would really feel represented is yeah. like someone wearing a yarmulke, basically, and or you know, yeah. or, or or you know, or uh, uh, you know, female or whatever equivalents of that. And mm -hmm. there's almost no media like that. So you know, yeah. there's a kid now in the in the G League, which is the NBA's minor league, who wears a yarmulke. Then it's like, oh, that's very cool. Like if this kid can mm -hmm. make the NBA wearing yarmulke, to me, that's like unbelievably cool. Or um, you know. Uh, one of my dad's students is in the minor leagues like that, that idea of like a kid who grew up like us uh, yeah. and it, it just, and it's see, I'm saying something wrong because it's, it, there is like a pride of like all Jewish people for sure. A hundred percent. But it, we were so, but like that's been done before basically like mm -hmm. the Sandy Kovacs is like, but there's never been anybody who looked like exactly like me. So that would, yeah. that's the cool thing. But, in, but, really no it's, it's it's no connection other than i think it's probably considered like a kosher hobby it's like the the people mm. who are maybe you know because our world can be very strict there's a lot of things we yeah. can't do um but the i i it's like okay like better he's out drink you know pl watching sports or playing sports than smoking or drinking or yeah or um you know hanging out with uh you know people romantically or whatever like so yeah I, but I, I think short answer no i don't think there's a big connection for me personally at all 
Yeah. It's yeah. just what I like. That's just like who it, now it's funny because I talk about sense of community, and obviously, like religion yeah. brings a sense of community that I think right. the average person listening like couldn't even fathom, like the mm -hmm. the like uh, a large religious community and how everyone knows each other and it is very familial, and you'll have you know, uh, you know, 700 people at a wedding or at a thousand people at a funeral and things like that. Um, but but uh no but i think the the sports for me is just like i like it i like watching sports it's very simple there's not like a deeper meaning you know oh i'll, I'll take it i'll take it i'm always always just digging for the deep meanings. but no i actually wanted to bring that up uh or bring up religion because akiva i yeah i mean some people might be upset with me for um, just letting you know this, but I'll let you know that. So I have a guest nomination form for Pod Friends, and people always let me know like who they want to mm -hmm. um, be on the podcast. Yeah, I put in a nomination before the episode, right? Did you do one for yourself? No, no, no. no. I <laughs> speaking to you before we went on air. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, that's that's a different form. That's a different yeah, form yeah. for the okay, guests. Fine. It's a very yeah, organized yeah. podcast, sure, sure, logistically. Sure, sure, sure. But um, you know, so there's another form though that all of like guests could fill out, um, and it's linked in the show notes and all that. Or sorry, that uh, listeners could fill out to suggest guests. Yes. And Akiva, I'll let mm -hmm. you know that about one in twelve point five, or eight percent of guest nominations have been for you, Akiva. And, wow, and that's a very so specific number, but thank you. It is. It is very specific. And considering how many people there are in the RHAP universe, that it's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I might say. Well, I've never done this a... before. I haven't been yeah. a guest on a podcast really in a couple of years. I think of any podcast though, wow. from my head that I can remember. Wow. Um, and yeah. certainly not to talk about myself. I've never done. I've talked about myself ad nauseum yeah. constantly but not but usually in a in a way where rob's like all right can we get we're, we're talking about this movie here why are you like telling me about seventh grade uh yeah well people <laughs> but people want you to people want you to talk about yourself and like i thought it was interesting going through not only the questions in the renap facebook group but also in the guest nominations because people time and time again bring up like we want to know more well, actually, before I get into the what people want to know more, I have to say one person says uh, Akiva's the creative erudite, always entertaining co-host of Renap. Akiva just seems like an interesting and wonderful guy and someone with whom we'd love to be friends that we thought that this Pod Friends podcast would be a perfect forum to hear from him. Thanks very much. Uh, and someone else wrote, would love to hear yeah. his heroic journey to one day tie his shoes so mm -hmm. that's there's a, so that's there's a wide what i get like incredibly yes. earnest nice things mm -hmm. and then like someone just absolutely making fun of me <laughs> look i mean i think it, yeah there's, there's a lot a of range. both of that you, you have range which is really mm -hmm. important but i have to i have to really dive into the question because you're talking about religion of like people just want to know more about you know your experience not only your upbringing in mm -hmm. terms of orthodox Ju or modern orthodox judaism but also just what that looks like in your life now um especially just knowing that there are a lot of listeners who don't know all of that so i mm -hmm. i kind of want i don't know i'd love to know like how that it, you told you told me a little bit about your upbringing but like how did that specifically intersect with how you were raised and then also yeah. kind of how you live now Right. I mean, that is sort of who we are. Like, it's not even intersecting. It's like the whole thing. Right. I've never been mm. anything else. And that is like my entire world and everything in it is mm -hmm. like just a, you know, like the but sort of the universe I've lived in. And like I said, my dad was a rabbi and the community mm -hmm. I grew up in was, you know, um, w w was was predominantly not exclusively, but predominantly people like me. Uh, yeah. And then like to give to give a spectrum, I know there's been other Jewish podcasters who've actually spent. Uh, a decent amount of time speaking about Judaism uh, yeah. on your show recently. I have not yeah. because it just it just came out. I have not listened to Kevin's yet, um, no. but I know I heard Shannon talk about it and I heard Jordan Kalish uh, mm -hmm. talk about it. That's right. um, so there's a there's sort of a um, a graph, let's say, from people who are Jewish, but you yeah. know that's it. Like they don't they you know don't know anything about it, or it, it just mm -hmm. not you know that's just who they are. But they they sort of don't practice at all. And then there's reform that does that is maybe more involved and conservative. And I, I'm not going to describe each of the uh, right. movements, or whatever. And then there's orthodox. But then within orthodoxy, there are Hasidic people. Uh, and you could Google all this stuff. I'm Again, I'm, I don't want to get in trouble and sort of describe anybody. And even with that, right. there's sort of ultra orthodox that's not Hasidic. And then there's Hasidic that is ultra orthodox. And uh -huh. we're sort of um, 
what you'd call modern, which is, uh, you know, I wear a yarmulke on my head and, and mm-hmm. um, we keep the laws, but perhaps like certain things we don't do as strictly and, and maybe there's more mingling of, of the sexes and there's more um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, more mingling, I would say that not with sex, but with the outside world. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, so I don't know where you, I, it's, it's hard to explain. Uh, if you had any questions, I could certainly answer them. But like, basically, that's you know, like I said, we the the central tenets are keeping kosher, and uh, you know, taking uh, keeping Shabbat, which is uh, about mm-hmm. twenty five hours each week, where we don't do any work or really anything other than spend time with family and and uh, community, mm-hmm. and. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, th- there's a lot that goes with it. It's perhaps beyond the scope of uh, of this podcast, but um, what? No, there's what? there's no, nothing know, beyond so the much. scope of this questions. podcast. I mean, like I'm saying, it's like our whole our whole lives. Like, I, well, like, yeah, it's like, hey, do you do this? I could, I yeah. certainly can answer or, or why do you do this? But the, I think there is, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, I but yeah, it, just the answer. Yeah. I think it's not like. It, right, I, like you said, intersection. It's not an intersection because, mm-hmm. like, I've been Jewish. I I happen to yeah. wear a hat now, but mostly I wear a hat just because, like, my hairline is such a disaster, <laughs> uh, and I wear a yarmulke under my hat. But right. uh, but I grew up wearing yarmulke, and I would be at you know work or at uh, uh, NBC or wherever, like wearing yarmulke. And I'm sure there were people who didn't know what that was, or yeah. um or uh you know had never seen it before if they you know this is certainly someone maybe who, who didn't grow up in new york grew up in a, mm-hmm. a outside the the metropolitan area and i never thought about it once i never thought like a yeah. the only t- I, i'm saying at well certainly at work like i obviously i, I the the i never thought like ooh, like they probably like maybe to them i'm like the guy with the yarmulke because like no one else here wears one and i wear one you know what i mm-hmm. mean uh, not in a bad way, just like that's how you remember people. Like sometimes yeah. your first day of class, like, um, you know, you're trying to remember kids' names and you have, you know, 80 students like, OK, that's the guy with the weird haircut. So it's, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's just, so, um, yeah, I, I just think like it's always been sort of who I am and who I've been. I, I, I you know, it's, yeah. it, it's always been a part of me. So it's not even. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's almost like hard to explain because it's it's like our whole life. I mean, it might feel like it's hard to explain for you, but I think actually like what you said does a pretty great job of explaining it, you know, just in terms of the role in your life. Because like I, I feel, uh, I don't know, it's it's interesting how much, like how many conversations, uh, not only, uh, well, on podcasts, but like in life that I have with people about Judaism. And I, because I, because I just, I grew up in North Jersey in a community mm-hmm. where like yeah, yeah. That we had multiple, multiple synagogues within our town. Right. And like, it, it's a very diverse like community where you just meet a lot of different types of people, which I'm really thankful for um, in retrospect, especially. And then even like going to GW here in DC and, you know, you, my university experience and just like, there's a lot. Um, I'm very thankful for those conversations. One of the things though, that I wanted to uh, I guess to finish that thought, what I was saying is like some people, uh, you know, they're like, okay, I'm, I'm culturally Jewish and I do X, Y, Z things, but I don't really mm-hmm. practice in X, Y, Z ways. And so I think it is really telling actually. And again, people could learn more beyond this. Like you don't, you, do, you definitely don't need to be the, uh, I don't know if the word's arbiter. Let me go with that. I like that word. I don't know if I'm using it, but you don't need to be the arbiter of the Jewish faith or like the ambassador of the Jewish faith. Oh, I'm definitely not saying this right and wrong. I'm just like no. saying this is what we, this is what we <laughs> yeah. do. Yeah. And there's yeah, a lot well, of different I, things. There's many yeah. different, and even exactly. in our tiny little yeah. subsection, there's, mm-hmm. you know, there's a hundred different w- ways of doing things and they call us yeah. the people of the book. You see, I, I, I'm, I have a fake background behind me. Yeah, right now, no, it's. There's ah. usually hundreds of books behind me. Like there's, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> Jewish literature on any you think of like a minor Jewish law and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books just written about that one law and then there's mm-hmm. you know a zillion uh different laws so mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. yeah I have to I, say I, yeah beautiful fake background by the way and uh beautiful piano back there stone uh fireplace chimney set up couch I want to be in that fake background yeah, with I just you. clicked fake background um the reason I did it was because I am actually home alone with two of my sons and i thought um when they were sort of like playing and being loud i thought i would just like get go into a sep- a room far away from them 
and like sit on a bed or something and, and podcast we're gonna move very soon and i'm yeah. gonna have a uh a, a, like a nice office again which i used to have and i don't because my kids wanted their own rooms here but we're gonna move again and i'm very excited about like having a real podcast set up again um but I, I speak. I wanted to like. Uh, I wanted to bring us to to the plenty of money, which I think I'm very close to. Okay. Um, okay. But but so basically, to, but just to get how I got into podcasting, because because there's a, sort of in the timeline, this is sort of where we are now, uh -huh. which is so I I started watching Survivor, like I said, I yeah. after having not watched it for a while while I was married, and my wife would play uh, basketball on Wednesday nights. I would I remember I wanted to watch it, but. Um, she would play basketball on Wednesday nights. And so I was always like dealing with the kids and maybe I'd like watch the last 20 minutes once they were in bed and asleep and everything. Mm -hmm. But, um, so I stopped watching the show for a while, moved across the world. Wasn't really watching any TV. I was just getting my life together. And then I watched a whole like season in a day, uh, one weekend. And I, because I was such a big podcast fan, I'm like, Oh, I wonder if there are oh any podcasts gosh. about it. And uh, on one, uh, on one X speed. Well, maybe it was. I mean, it was. I was. I mean, it was probably two two days or something. Whatever. It was a weekend. I watched it in a weekend. I, Still. <laughs> um. But it, yeah, it was yeah. a very short amount of time. It was basically like every waking hour I spent. I think it was uh, Survivor Philippines, and uh -huh. um, and I had I heard Rob on a different podcast. Rob sister you know, on a different mm -hmm. podcast right before that. So it was like I I don't know if I knew he had a podcast or when I searched Survivor he came up and then I started listening. And I saw, I heard someone who I felt uh, a strong kinship with um, as like the, a parasocial listener because right. he liked the same sports teams as me. And he always quoted Seinfeld, which was one of my favorite shows. And mm -hmm. he, uh, basically everything he liked, I also liked uh, in terms of sports and pop culture. Uh, so I would maybe tweet at him a couple of times. Uh, I'm sure he had no idea who I was. I think I emailed in like a guest suggestion once he didn't respond to. And Ooh. then I don't know. I mean, he, he hot I, enemies I, will bring you I, on. I, I don't think he his preferred method of communication is email. And he also Fair didn't enough. know who I was. He was probably getting a lot of email. And then yeah. I don't know why, but I'm I'm not like I don't love rejection. I'm shocked that I <laughs> was ghosted or not ghosted. He had no reason. He like he was no obligation to respond to me, but that I sort of sent the second email to someone who um who had not responded to my first, but I said, Hey, you keep mentioning Seinfeld. You should do a Seinfeld podcast. Uh -huh. And I didn't say we should do one because again, I, although I had done like, you know, a few podcasts, uh, like a few years earlier, right. I was not like, this is like a professional operation here or whatever. And I, so I wasn't pitching myself really. I wasn't not pitching myself, but I didn't say we should do it. It was basically right. like, I would love it. Like if you did it every week, I would be like your number one fan. Mm -hmm. Um, and he said, yeah, maybe like, uh, I could find the email or something, but he, he he was into the idea and he said, why don't we do like a, a call to make sure you're not a, a serial killer? And if you're not, uh, we could do maybe like a test show or something. So we had an hour conversation. Wow. I guess it, I guess it went well. This is the early days. I don't think this could probably happen now, but I think I mean, he'd be up for it. I think if you had a great idea, he would, Rob would certainly listen now. Um, but I think it would probably it was probably easier to get through to him then. And he probably had a, more spare time then. Mm -hmm. Um and so we did five episodes as a trial run, and people liked it. Uh, this was a Seinfeld podcast, the right. episodic Seinfeld. There were very few sort of episodic podcasts then, and we did it. We we met every week. Uh, you know, we, we didn't really take any weeks off, and we grinded, and we finished all 180 episodes. We we finished it off with a small live finale in Manhattan the night before a uh, Survivor Know It All's podcast in 20. I don't even remember what year, 2017. And um, right. yeah, and that was it. It was like, OK, I had I had also along that, uh, you know, in the same time started a, a sport restarted the 32 fans podcast. My friend Ari Gold was no longer available. So I asked um, a different friend, Alex Chester, to mm -hmm. uh, run the podcast with me. All three podcasts I have now. I am not the host and I am not the producer. I do not. Uh, I'm not the editor, I should say. You're uh, the talent. You're the talent. Ugh. So you tell that to Ali. <laughs> so. <laughs> so um, I, uh, so I had started and I'm like, okay, I was happy to do that. Um, uh, and you know, that was sort of like scratching the itch of that. Whereas I was not doing anything in the sports field or anything that really like, um, uh, fulfilled me sort of creatively, but I had the sports podcast. And so I was fine with that. And I did not think I would ever do another podcast with Rob again. We certainly knew we did not want to do another episodic show. I think Seinfeld podcast, people really, really liked it. 
mm-hmm. I don't think it was ever like a smash hit or anything like that. And I hmm. think any other show would have been less popular because that show at least has like, you know, was on the air uh, still like, you know, five times a day and has like legions of fans. And you still mm-hmm. like there's more Seinfeld trivia nights and bars than almost any other show other than maybe like, yeah, or something, even today. Mm-hmm. Um, but for whatever reason, uh, I, I think one day maybe we did like a side podcast uh, and then I think one I think Rob emailed me one day and was like, hey, let's talk about other ideas or something like that. And we ended up uh, saying like, hey, let's do a podcast where we just try and figure this out on the air. We'll just banter and maybe we'll figure out a podcast idea. And then I think we did a second one of those. And ultimately, that became Renap. Robin, if you need a podcast where mm-hmm. the idea of the podcast every week is that we try and figure out what to do next week. Um, and we're still doing it. And I and for, you know, it is it has been, you know, I guess more successful or uh I think then I, I say more successful. I in all three of my podcasts, 32 fans, new girl, old guy and Robin, keep need a podcast. I've never asked for a number. I don't know which episodes are more popular than other episodes. I like st- sort of staying out of that. Yeah, uh, I don't know how many listens re- people listen. It's like the main question I get. I call them how many people is in that podcast. I, I, I have no idea to any of them. Yeah. I love not um, to know, by the way. It's mm-hmm. nice. Uh, I have been confronted with the with the, the statistic, the data, the charts uh, here and there, but I will never ask. Uh, mm-hmm. So I get you on that one. Yeah, so mm-hmm. we, um, yeah, and, and that has been really a blessing. I think we've really, like it was, it, it, I think in, in some ways it is a community show. We've involved so many of the podcasters. I mean, now, thankfully, mm-hmm. A, there are so many more podcasters. I think when I started, it was yeah. really like, you know, there was Josh Wiggler and Mike Bloom and Jessica Lease. Yeah, you can uh, only have Josh Wiggler and Mike Bloom and Jessica Lease. What a shame. Oh, no, no, I'm so no, but were, no, I know. Were, no, listen, they're still there for a reason. Yeah, I know. Um, but it was not there was it was it was a small roster, Antonio Mazzaro for sure. Um, and I don't remember, but yeah, so then our class of podcasts was probably more like myself and Haley Strong yeah. and Ali Lasher and Brian Cohen mm-hmm. and um and um yeah so i i think we were able to you know like bring in members of the community and have them on and 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 create this sort of sub universe of podcasts that uh is very fun and and uh, the community is really uh mm-hmm. it's amazing like we've I, I have no again i have no idea how big it is but i know like if i ask for <laughs> submissions i get a lot of submissions so yeah clearly someone out there is listening or maybe it's one person with a lot of burners um but <laughs> we've really you know and this week it's, oh, no. some weeks it's like okay like all right that's fine and it's like all right we did a few in a row and they're fine but we happen to have uh like uh done something very fun we're coming off of we we watched uh the movie groundhog day you did seven times in a row and podcasted all seven times with the great eric stein mm-hmm. um and so like that really like reinvigorates you it's like oh yeah like this is we're trying to like hit home runs every week and you don't have to hit home runs and you won't for sure and some weeks you'll for sure strike out and it's mm-hmm. okay to hit singles and doubles but i think like that's really like you're trying to like i, I don't know we're, we're trying to like do cool things that people haven't done before and i, I think some weeks we we uh we're you know if we're fortunate at doing that uh you know it's uh it, it feels great the weird thing about podcasting mm-hmm. it's a lot more like having a late night show than like making a movie which is sometimes we'll make a podcast. Often it's with, you know, something like uh, we had a, a musical by Jason Curtis Rivera right. or um, uh, mm-hmm. a, a, an audio documentary. Everyone should listen to the musical. Everyone should, even if you don't listen to the Robin Human podcast, everyone for sure should listen to the also the audio documentary by Lindsay yeah, Wilson. Because uh, I'm going to mention are, that in one second. What? Are, you, you, oh, no. You, okay, good. We're, we're going to come back to that. That's good. Because, because, um, the I, I like those are so good and it's those episodes come out and people say the nicest things in the whole world now it's like it's wow. you know it fills your ego and it's like this is the best episode of anything i've ever heard and blah 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 blah, blah and i love that renap is my favorite show and that is really wonderful yeah and but there's two things a the one mean thing that somebody says like if so, so people are yeah. in and be like hey i'm undergoing chemotherapy it sucks like my life is really hard right now but, you know, mm-hmm. I listened to your show and it made me laugh and it like really made my day. And people have written in that exact email. And I'll be honest, yeah. I don't remember their names. But like right. the once in a while, and so I probably do remember their names, but right. the, the once in a while where someone will write something mean, I know like they're, they're like, you know, every single thing about them. And I'm like, well, so be like, well, what made this person like write this mean thing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it sticks with you so much more. Like, I, I don't, I'm not saying I stalk them. I'm saying like, I will be able to remember like verbatim what they said five years ago or whatever 
Uh, and uh, I don't know. Maybe I need more hate. Maybe it wasn't like uh, it's not enough that I can remember it. But the you know what I mean? It's like the the you you remember the mean things much more than like the incredibly, incredibly nice things. People are like, I, I was giving in labor and I listened to your podcast, things like that. Wow. Um, but but I also think it is a little bit. Podcast is a little bit in and out in the sense that it's like what it's great that you did this episode that people like. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't really if you do like five in a row that suck, it's like, OK, what now? You know, we're, yeah. we're gonna go listen to the old one. That's not really how it works. So right. you sort of do have to keep growing. And I'm not saying I do this. I'm just saying like sort of like big picture, like and you, all of us, like, yeah, you, you have it's if you make a movie, it's like, OK, you could rest on the laurels of that movie probably for like 10 years if you make a, a movie here. It's like a good podcast just like gets people to listen to your next episode. So I think well, it's like sustained yeah. goodness is really what you're what you're looking for more than like it's great to be great every week but again that doesn't like i can't be someone if someone's like hey that episode sucks i'll be like yeah but did you listen to this thing in 2018 it freaking ruled like it doesn't work like that you know yeah that's the reality i mean honest and i mean i think you even understated in terms of a movie you could be the thing is with movies with books like you you could be long gone and your movie could you sure. know, have a resurgence and blow up to be the biggest thing, the cult classic and all the things. But yeah, with podcasting, it's a lot of it's like, what have you done for me lately? Or like, yeah. what's the latest? Which and is fair. This is not a complaint even. It's just like that. Well, yeah. It makes sense. Nobody yeah. reviews. Uh, I, I One of the late night shows once said like, you, nobody should ever review like the Tonight Show or Late Night with Jimmy Kimmel or whatever. It's not meant to be viewed in like a, pr you know, which is ironic because mm -hmm. Rob and I do sometimes do, you know, we all probably review things um, yeah. that are maybe not meant to like be under that firm, you know, strong of a microscope. It's single episodes of television. Right. Show. That's half the internet at this point. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it, it is like a lot of it is meant to be a little bit transient, which is fine. Um, anyway, so the podcast is going great. Yeah. But I do. But I, so in 2019, I um, I, I what's it called? We decided to go to Minnesota mm -hmm. and uh, oh. for a live show, uh, sort of on a, a whim. It was like not a lot of planning. I think it started my friend Alex Chester. I do 32 fans with is from Minnesota and he's a Minnesota Twins fan. And I'm mm -hmm. a Mets fan and the Mets were playing the Twins twice. So we said, let's go to both games. Yeah. We said it on a podcast. And Rob was like, hey, like you guys are, you know, like let's let's go together. And then uh -huh. the three of us were going to go. And then we're like, you know, once we're going, let's like do podcasts. And we ended up, um, we ended up having uh, a, a nice group of people fly out, and then also a nice group of local listeners or people coming from like nearby states or cities or whatever. Right. And we had a wonderful time. We rented out um a Ben and Jerry's, and we uh -huh. ranked. We put thirty two ice cream flavors in a bracket, and we ranked all thirty two ice cream flavors, and mm -hmm. had a tournament with like all of us testing the ice cream flavors. Very fun. And we went to two baseball games as a group and we did a, a, a live show that I, I think went off nicely at night. Um, and we also did an episode, which is like a lost episode, which is what that aforementioned um, uh, uh, mystery episode, the, the audio documentary is. But I the, think then the, the sleepover I, that, podcast right before then I had just <sighs> I had just uh, like my whole department sort of fell apart and I had just lost my job. And um I guess I wasn't in like the best place I'd ever been. Yeah. Um. And so I said, I we were basically like a lot of people were roasting me around mm -hmm. that time, and certainly that weekend. I, I it's fine. People could roast me all day. It 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 really doesn't bother me. Comes with the territory. I bring it on myself. If anything, it's funny. But basically, I realized that while I was saying like I lost my job, and I forget what else was going on. There was a few other things going on in my life that I had been talking about. Yeah. Uh, openly, and I was just painting a very bleak picture. Mm -hmm. And I th I forget what happened. And then I realized, like, everyone's people are going to, like, start to go fund me for me. Like, I sound so pathetic. So I said, don't worry about me. I have plenty <laughs> oh, no. of money, which was really not to say, like, guys, yeah, I'm freaking rich. So. <laughs> it was just me saying, like, I'm like, I like, I'm OK. Like, I can pay my bills this month. You know what I mean? So it, the uh -huh. plenty of money thing did not come from me bragging about being rich at all. It came from, like, me basically being like guys i have like a severance and thing like i'll be okay like i just was painting such a bleak picture of myself at the time yeah and and, and then everyone was like roasting me that night or whatever so it was yeah. just me sort of being like it's not that bad don't worry about it you no know? that i and i will say there's <laughs> as many podcasts for for nap as there have been as many rhap podcasts there are you know that there's something uh, i don't want to say special but notable 
or memorable about a podcast is when you remember where you were when you were listening. So sure, I have that for uh, for other podcasts too. Absolutely, I remember where I was when I was listening to the quote unquote sleepover podcast and, and mm-hmm. all of this. I was in. Uh, if anyone, uh, I mean, don't dox me. I'll I'll be. I was in a Whole Foods uh, on P Street here in in DC. Shout mm-hmm. out to anyone who's been to the Whole Foods. And I remember walking down the aisles and just thinking like, Oh my gosh, they're being so rough on Akiva. Like, what is yeah. going on here? <laughs> Um, no, so bad. I think I, I might've blocked it out mentally. It's, it's, it's so interesting that like the human brain works like that. I feel like mm. sometimes I think these memories are a little bit fake or skewed, but I could still remember like what, you know, being on the subway and listening to a certain podcast or, or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I feel like I could do it for a lot of them. There's something interesting yeah. about audio where when you're really engrossed, you sort of remember like what steps you were taking, where you were. Yeah. I mean, um, I will say I remember where I was also in terms of Renap, uh, oddly, like driving on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. I don't even know it was listening to Rob get very upset with you laying down while you were podcasting. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I don't even remember the rest house. of that episode right now. I just moved yeah. into this house and <laughs> I, there was nowhere to sit. It was one of these like every single thing was a box. We had the worst move in the history of the world. Like the movers mm-hmm. basically quit in the middle of the day for I don't know why. And so, like, we had couches standing up. It was, like, dangerous. It was – the whole thing was one of the worst experiences outside of, like, actual, like, horrible things that happen to people. Mm-hmm. Truly, like, w- the worst weekend of my life probably. Uh, out- outside of, like, really bad things. You know what well, I mean? Yeah. Like, in yeah. terms of, like, yeah. low low stakes things, just horrific. Yeah. Um, and, uh, like, we had to have friends. It was, like, pathetic. We had to have friends come because we had to leave by, like, midnight of the 31st, our old mm-hmm. place. And because they had sort of bailed and you couldn't find movers in like two minutes notice, like all our friends had to come and like physically move for us. And we were like grown adults. And it was it was yeah, it, it, it felt great. Like we've we've cultivated this community of people who like didn't complain and didn't ask and were like, you know, saved us. But it was like, oh, this is like really this is a low. So, yeah, that, so there was nowhere to sit. Um, and uh, the truth is, I don't I like being comfortable. I, I like my back is annoying sometimes. I don't love sitting up for like three hours in a row and some of those naps are long so i do sort of like sitting on a couch but i don't like thinking like oh what do i like uh you know like if i'm scratching my nose or something like are they look are people looking at me so i don't mind doing video podcasts but i i like not being on video um my kids are like you know it's rude that every week chester's on video and you're not when you do the podcast and i'm Mm. like well yeah you're probably right but like um if he says anything i will put it on but it makes me happy so like let you know, let me let me be me if uh, as long as as long as they'll let me. And, you know, on this on that note, you know, because like so many people have opinions on how people should podcast, how people should do anything, I guess, in the world. I think everyone who's listening could relate to being told how they should do things uh, for better or for worse. But I, how, how does your family does your family have like a consensus? Like, are they giving you five stars in terms of your, uh, podcasting and its role in your life? I'm sure that they don't listen to the podcasts. Uh, to, but I'm curious, like, what's how? Uh, how's your family feel about you podcasting? And actually, uh, the the great Josh Green, former Pod Friends guest, actually asked mm-hmm. about this. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't think they think about it at all. I, nobody listens. Some, That's well, nice. My sometimes once, my dad once mentioned because I t- I told some story and my yeah. dad mentioned it, I was like, Dad, you were told like you were not allowed to listen. I I don't know if mm-hmm. you have like a specific audience member or type of audience member that you think of in your head mm-hmm. when you are podcasting. But for me, it, like, can't be my dad. You know what I mean? Like, I have no. to be able to, like, have the freedom to say things that maybe I wouldn't say Agreed. in front of my father, who's a rabbi. You know what I mean? So, like, mm-hmm. and I have this sometimes. Like, I know that there are some children who listen. Um, we've met them. And, but, so it's hard. because <laughs> All, like, all do, I can think like, of is, like, I don't know how old she is at this point, but Maddie, Maddie over on her. Yeah, yeah, I think she's driving. She's probably but 30 at this the, point, yeah. But, <laughs> And we have a pretty PG show for the most part, but I also like we're not constrained if you want to say something that happened in a television show or a movie or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is. Yeah, that is tricky. I don't know how other people do it. I don't have a good answer to that, but it is always tricky uh, in terms yeah. of like. But I guess like, the you know, if, if you know, it, you don't have to be it's not your job. And I'm not talking yeah. about a specific person. I'm talking about yeah. everybody. Yeah, but yeah, it's not yeah. your job to police other people like they any parent or any whatever. If they're going to listen in the car in front of their kids, they know that this is you know, what I mean, like that they're they're probably fine with whatever you're going to say and they probably yeah. seem worse whatever like yeah um yeah yeah it's yeah but anyway F, but and the good news is i think after that 
was like a low point for me, even though that Minnesota weekend was uh, was a uh, a huge high point, and I, it was great, and mm-hmm. I would love. We really talked about doing it again in 2020. I had all these plans between the Tokyo Olympics and um, some fam- yeah. important family events, and um, and doing RHB stuff and a few other things. I had like five or six things all in a row, like every mm-hmm. other person on Earth. I don't think this is unique. That sure. all like died within with within like uh, two days of each other yep. at the very beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> And some of them are like, yeah, I'm still trying to do, uh, you know, some of them happened, you know, on a year delay or whatever. But it, it was like all these things. I was like so excited, doing great 2020, like mm-hmm. new job. And, and yeah. um, so but I think it's been a very, uh, you know, solid few years of, uh, you know, between, you know, both in my personal life. And I, I have, yeah. three, you know, I had the two daughters, but we have three sons now. Also, I have five kids, it's a lot mm-hmm. of kids. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And uh uh, you know, I, I, I feel like that was like a low point, but since then, uh, you know, I, 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 I like to joke that my twenties were my thirties and my thirties were my twenties. Right. I feel like I've spent my thirties doing like, I'm sure when I tell my mom, like, Hey, sorry, I didn't call you yesterday. I was podcasting or whatever. Like she probably thinks like, Oh, that's stupid. Like that's, you know, yeah. my son should be a doctor or something. I don't know. But like, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm like I've spent time because my 20s were more serious. I was much more worried about like supporting my family yeah. and dealing with this, you know, young children and a new marriage and things like that. Mm-hmm. Where it was very serious, and I and and I feel like my 30s have been like, okay, let's like calm down a little bit and not like doing anything crazy at all. Because if you know me, like my crazy is not not that crazy. Um, but but you know, just doing fun things for me and like I guess having more uh, financial freedom and more and and sort of more social freedom to like do. The things I want to do, so I am like having much more fun, and uh, you know, in my thirties, and and yeah. sort of doing the things I want to do that maybe I couldn't do because I got married when I was twenty. We couldn't, you know, yeah, we couldn't drink at our own wedding. We couldn't, uh, like, yeah. uh, we couldn't go to Vegas as like a not that that was like a big goal of ours, but right. just like there were so many like crazy things that y- you know we couldn't uh, couldn't do, and then having kids young, and now one thing we did, which was I don't know if. <laughs> It's not for everybody. Logistically, it's impossible Uh-oh. at this point for many people. All of our kids, and this was not super intentional, but all of our kids are very spaced <laughs> out. So all of our kids are about uh-huh. four. There's a time in the year yeah. where this year they were 16, 16, 12, 8, 4, and 0. Everyone's exactly four years apart. Oh, my gosh. Not now because people have had birthdays since then. But Yeah. But And so we've never had two kids at the same time in diapers, which a lot of people who have two kids couldn't say that, you know? Yeah. A lot of people wow. with – a lot of people with – uh with two or three children couldn't could not say that. So no, no, I, for biological so, reasons. Yeah. So I'm saying like we, you know, we we were able to have a, a I'm not I don't recommend having five children to most people. It's not for everyone. I do mm-hmm. recommend having kids to everyone. I think if you are if it is a physical possibility and you are at a place where you can do it, I think uh I I highly recommend having kids. I don't know anybody who had kids and and uh regrets it. But five is <laughs> five is a lot of kids. You might, you know, you might not want five. But um, we were able because we got married so young, we yeah. were able to sort of be such young parents that even now I'm not like such an old dad. I'm I'm mm-hmm. probably older than a lot of the dads will be older than a lot of the dads in my class for when my one year old son is, you know, goes to school and stuff. But yeah, um, yeah, I think it was like accidentally like this great move that we were able to sort of spread out the kids and now our older mm-hmm. daughters are incredibly helpful and like don't need you know certainly a 16 year old a 13 year old don't need as much um sort of like day you know i don't have to literally babysit them and they yeah. could also babysit <laughs> we haven't had to pay for babysitting and uh, you know maybe more than once or twice ever because that's we've the got way to do it. two girls here to do it so that's the um, way to do it yeah and you know i will say too i think the thing that's really that i appreciate is like everyone's on their own kind of path and their own journey and it's easy to get mm-hmm. in your head like i turned 30 in 2022 and mm-hmm. you know a lot of people I, even with 25 I, I feel like with every year just like oh you know you're 30 that means xyz needs to change it's like no you're, you're mm-hmm. living your life you need to do but i feel that I, way about 40 yeah well no i i agree and i think i was i was just gonna say like my my mom and i always tell people this because i'm like just putting things into perspective mom doing well she was 45 when she had me so mm-hmm. that like you like you're young it's wild yeah. to think that you yes. are not even that age and yet right. like yeah you're older but you have a lot of experience you're, you're able mm. to bring uh just no, that's to, great perspective honestly yeah because i mean i, I hope it helps 
I, yeah, I do think, yeah, like the same thing with turning four. It's like, well, I can't, not that there's something I'm going to stop, but it's like, oh, it won't be as cute anymore. You know, it's not like at a certain point you have to grow up, but you really don't. And and if you do, yeah. it's maybe when you're 75, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like my, my if, if uh, people are keeping up with the math, I think that means my, I think my mom's uh, 75 at this point. Or, uh, so, so she's got to like, like now start. No know, more hobbies. No more no fun. No more hobbies. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, she can have fun. It just has to be age appropriate at this point. Oh she can't God. be like super into Pokemon anymore or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'll tell my mom she has to drop Pokemon. <laughs> but that's, but uh, no, I think <laughs> it is funny because ironically, that's the best time for hobbies is when Ooh. you're, you know, you know, you like golfing, go golf. You like painting, I, paint. Speaking of hobbies, Akiva, you are famously mm -hmm. someone who listens to all of the music, all of the albums. I, I have to ask you as we talk about music, mm -hmm. are, do you have like a top ten? You're you're a Pearl Jam person apparently, which I don't know if I knew. Is that a thing? Yeah, I went for my thirtieth birthday. I don't know if you still need any ideas for your thirtieth birthday, man. No, uh, I, I went with a I friend. Mean, <laughs> I went with a friend to. Uh, we went to Germany and Austria um, to a couple of Pearl Jam concerts. So I do really like them, but I uh, I mean I don't think that's like. Uh, I don't know if they're my number one all time. I like finding yeah. new music. Actually, I do like uh, mm -hmm. like that's what really people joke like, oh, you listen to like new albums every week. I just like find. Yeah, I'm looking for new stuff and like building playlists and stuff. It is yeah. pure. Nobody ever cares. I, the same way I could. I have 40 different people I could have like an in-depth conversation about like the Mets minor league teams with. Mm -hmm. I don't have anybody in my life who I like who like will talk music with. It's like purely, you know, for myself. And I find anytime yeah. we, we do episodes about it, let's say on 32 fans, they're like the least uh you know sort of like responded to episodes for whatever reason mm -hmm. music is so fractured and like outside of the top few most popular artists who maybe release an album once every few years like i don't know everyone's listening to different stuff and i, I don't know people don't i i would I, like yeah it's like if you started a music podcast if i started a music podcast it would be very unpopular i was gonna say you know if you do decide to commit to four and a half podcasts that could be that could be the concept no, nah, I'd want to do I no more TV rewatches. Um, I would want to do. I don't know. I I, I don't I don't want to do another podcast, fourth podcast. But yeah, I think I would try like a big uh, some sort of big swing or something like that, like one big story or um, I don't know. I I, I, have, I don't have I've had ideas in the past, but I forget. Them. Also, and the nice thing about doing Robin Keeney podcast and Thirty Two Fans yeah. is they're both. Robin and Keeva need a podcast every week and 32 fans when we're not talking about football. We could, I could just, the, the, the reason I like doing it is we could talk about whatever we want. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, hey, oh, yeah. uh, whether it's a stupid yeah. idea, like who's the most famous Matt or uh, you like, let's name the, <sighs> you know, our hundred favorite movies of all time or whatever. Like between those two podcasts, we can just spend a, a week or a month talking about those things. Um, and if people want to listen, great. But like we're entertaining ourselves ultimately, you know? You just made me really angry with the King of the Mats uh, reference. Well, and did you, uh, did you not I make the? You didn't make I, it. I I came. I came. I became a podcaster and in, involved in the community. Truly, did that inspire you? Is like, wow, I could do so much better than this. And that I really it, it, no. It made me think. I was like, you know, maybe one day I'll be in the the mat tournament. Like maybe mm -hmm. round two of King of the Mats. Dave Matthews is not a mat. Uh, and I have I, issues. Yeah, I that. realize that now because we were talking about Michael Shannon recently, and I realize he's not a Shannon. And maybe, well, no, I think Michael Shannon is a Shannon, but Dave Matthews is not a Matt because it's not like Dave Matt, mm -hmm. you know. I hear you. So. I hear you. But Matthew, Matt, Matt, all right, whatever. This yes, has been yes, this so. has been litigated many times. We'll do a I'm Shannon. Sure we'll do a level. Shannon tournament. Um, no, I mean just am really, really angry uh, right now. Angry enough to almost end this podcast, which oh, is no. convenient because we're we're winding down. I'd mm -hmm. say, and there's so much so much else we could get into, Akiva. But I want to ask you, famous, famously, uh, or uh, uh, yeah, sure, famously on Pod Friends. Famously, I ask every guest the same question toward the end of the podcast. And uh, that question is, Akiva, if your life yeah. were a book or documentary, what would the title be and why? There's so many twists and turns in your life. Like, I am so curious how you would sum it up, what a title of that book or documentary might be. Uh, 
Yeah, because there's a, I, I have no clue what you're going to say. You know, I, it's funny because I've listened to the show, and I know that's the question. Every and single like, person says the same exact thing you're about I to say. I started thinking about it, but it's a very hard question because you're asking someone to sum up their life in, like, yeah, three words or whatever. It and could it's, be a long time. I, so I, like, immediately, like, no, I'm never going to think about this. Hopefully, he'll forget to ask, like, the main premise of the show. <laughs> probably forget that. Hopefully it'll cancel on me, so I don't have to. I'm think like, about I, this. I, I, can't, I can't, like, I can't publish. You're the stressing episode. out your guests, Matt. You're stressing I, them out. I'm into it. I love to put the, the, the something about fire. I love to throw, throw you know, like, just have guests really like sweating. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I am. I'm curious. What's the? Do you have a title? Do you have any idea well, me, what that would pitch. be? No, let me pitch. Let me pitch something. To pitch, me. pitch me. It, just based on what we've talked about. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something I'm like noise so people know the podcast is. I'm, still I'm trying working. to incorporate plenty of money because that was the, definitely the through line of this episode, right? We started with like what it's going to be, and eventually towards the end we got to it. So I think it has to be in there in some way. No, it doesn't need to be in there. Well, I it's think like... it should be. I think thematically it does have to be there. Honestly, no. What would you, what would your <laughs> what's your uh, title, Akiva? What what do you think? Pl- what do you think? Something like plenty of money, plenty of children, or something like that. Plenty of money, plenty of podcasts, plenty of children. <sighs> plenty of money, <laughs> podcasts, and children. I don't know. Do I feel like that? there's. We need to work on this. I don't. Hmm. So th- you have plenty of money. You have plenty mm-hmm. of podcasts. Mm-hmm. You have plenty of children. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I feel like the order of it could be litigated. Yeah, maybe bit. we could mix uh, the order. Plenty of you know, children. Uh, plenty of podcasts. Plenty of money. Something like that. Plenty of children, plenty of podcasts, plenty of money. Plenty of Akiva. Plenty of Akiva would be a good. Like, I think of like a flavor of love is like a. I'm thinking of like that format. It's like Mm -hmm. you go flavor of love is a show, you know, the rock of love. uh, Plenty of Akiva kind of fits within that. uh, I guess in terms of having the word of is the only similarity. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever you want. I will, I trust you Mm. to pick the name for this title. Plenty of Akiva is what it's all about. That's okay. we're gonna write that. We're gonna publish okay. that. Akiva, yeah. Thank you so much for thank you, Matt, all for of this. Me. I want to ask you though, as we wrap up, uh, any words for the community? Anyone you want to shout? Actually, I hate ask. I should stop asking people to shout people out because it's easy to forget, folks. But yeah, mm-hmm. anything you just want to say about the community to the community to Rob, uh, assuming he's listening. Uh, I don't know. Just want to give you the floor. For I would that. be very hurt if Rob doesn't listen to this. I'll be honest. I I mean, he's for sure going to listen. I, I would be shocked. We'll see. Nobody will find out. Nobody yeah. be like, hey, Rob, we'll find out. Um, I know. I, we'll see. The no. Uh, in terms of shout outs, I've been fortunate enough to do podcasts with three people I really love. And and the um, I, it's, you know, I don't really we didn't get into like the very, very modern day. But I'm extremely busy right now. Like I, um, I have a very, mm-hmm. very full time job where I manage stuff, and um, and like as a hobby on the side, I've been able to like work on NBC stuff on like Fridays and things like, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, Sunday Night Football this year and uh, various like World Championships and Olympic stuff and things like that. And then I also have three and a half podcasts and I have five children, so I've been very busy. So like Ooh, really. Yeah. There is no time for stuff like this other than the fact that I like doing it so much. And it's like I enjoy I really just enjoy speaking to Rob um, and uh, Alex and Allie so much that it's it. I wouldn't stop doing it. I'm not going to stop uh, doing it. I, I I love podcasting with all three of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish we had gotten into more of it in the episode, but uh, maybe another time. But the, yeah, I, I think that has been really the highlight those three for sure. And then yeah. just cumulatively without mentioning anybody yeah. else. I think like Rob, like I said, Rob has built this world, Matt, where you've been able, I've been able to meet people like someone will mention like, oh, uh, Sweden. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, I like know someone from Sweden. like you'll mm-hmm. you, you I, you've we, I've met people from all around the world and friends or at least like strong acquaintances or whatever from my, you know, it's really like broaden your horizons in a way that you couldn't do anywhere else outside the internet even if you lived in yeah. the most diverse place in the world and and sook out seeked out um i'm not an english teacher anymore i have no idea the, <laughs> the, 
you know, uh, like really all, all walks of life. You couldn't do it. Like the, right. we, we just, you know, outside of the internet and just like the blessing of being able to like meet all these amazing people and like be in their lives and like, you know, uh, uh, you know, having this just huge world of mm -hmm. hundreds of people, but especially the podcasters. Um, but, but, but certainly uh, for sure the listeners who like, you know, it, it's been like a really cool journey and it's been, I'm old. We've been doing this now for almost nine years and, and, wow. uh, you know, yeah. it's, 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 it feels like it's been 30, but it's also been very fun and I've really loved it. And it's been really one of the coolest parts of my life to like have this sort of separate thing. And, and, you know, I, I love working in sports, but the, when you work in something, yeah that like it, it becomes like more of a job you know and less of a passion so like, mm -hmm. this is still like a passion and fun and it's not like oh i got a podcast today i mean i'm sure everyone has that at some point obviously but it yeah. rare you know that that's really that, that that's how it is so shout out to to each and every listener out there and um and uh robin and chester and Hallie. yeah yeah and you yeah. matt because this was such a delight i had such a good time i i could do this I for do. hours I, yeah, literally. Yeah, if you didn't have yeah, anything I've, else, I've you had to do some life. of these things. Like, yeah, but it was fun to like actually get a bunch of stuff. Out yeah, of there. and to have a have like a there's a I don't know. It feels like its own like oral history, essentially, mm -hmm. essentially of like step by step and pretty pretty chronological, which is which is nice. Yeah, so, I, I I wanted you. to because I didn't want to forget things, but now I'm already like I'm gonna the second we're done, I'm gonna kick myself like. I should have written notes like, ah, oh, there's like 20 things <laughs> I no. forgot or which I'd said or said differently. So I'll be annoyed. No. And that. you know what? There's like a million other questions, Akiva, but uh, maybe one one more I, I have to ask, which I think is a great question from a listener. Um, mm -hmm. what, do, what do you think will be living rent free in your head as we conclude this podcast? Probably my kid, you know, I, we don't really let our kids watch you use screens that much during the week because it's so hard yeah. to get them off screens. And mm -hmm. so I told you this, but like I've had to, I normally don't podcast while I'm watching kids, but right now I have uh, two sons here who I let watch a, a movie and they're already on their second movie because we're hey, Akiva, going they're only getting old, They're only getting older in and your defense. So and Red Free is going to be, I think, yeah. my son who basically like dunks on me in a second is like, no, I'm, you know, going to try and finish the whole Matilda or whatever that he's watching. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, so he's going to be living Red Free for a while. Maybe one day we'll have him on Pod Friends. We'll figure it out. But any he gets, he gets a minute on uh, on NGOG every week. He already gets enough play. This kid, he gets enough uh, uh, exposure. I was gonna say we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll have to. I don't know. We'll we'll talk about it. Maybe we'll we'll um, Pod we Babies. Pod, pod we Babies. Have pod enemies. We have Pod Babies. Like Pod, pod Babies. Yeah. Like, kids of kids of podcasts. Kids podcasts are like, all right. Tell me all the dirt on your mom. Okay. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. <laughs> Akiva, thank you so much. Thing. Yeah. Like any, I'll give you the closing closing words. No, listen. This was a delight and an and and honor, Matt. And uh, and I, I'm a big fan of what you're doing. And uh, I keep it up. I think you're 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 building like this your own very cool world and niche in the in the RHAP community. So keep it up. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening to this week's episode of Pod Friends featuring Akiva. I love Akiva so much. I really do. And I have been such a big fan for so long, even before being a podcaster on RHAP, of course, uh, when I first discovered Renap. And so this was just awesome. And I'm glad we could touch on so much. And um, I'm, I'm just super thankful to Akiva for um, choosing to be part of Pod Friends. And I also just want to give a big shout out to everyone else who was part of Pod Friends this week. All the Pod Friends who submitted questions on the uh, Renap Facebook group. Thank you so much for your help getting ready for this. Um, just big shout outs to Brandon, David, Melissa, Ray, Sharon, Naomi, Amanda, Mike, Mastin Rafis, uh, Megan, Tim, Gregory, Greg, uh, Other Ray, Kathleen, Mark, Uriel, Elizabeth, Josh, Scott, Gretchen, Allie. Thank you all so much for being part of this week's episode. Um, and thank you for being pod friends. And you know what? If if folks are listening, if, again, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the pod for the pod friends podcast at rob has a website dot com slash pod friends feed um also submit guest ideas so many people as mentioned early in this podcast submitted akiva as an idea you could do that at bit.ly slash pod friends 
nom that's bit.ly slash podfriendsnom you can find that link in the show notes other than that you could find me of course at matt scotchy w on social media you could also find me on the wrestling wrap up this past week with a very fun episode um not only featuring billy garcia from survivor cook islands but also hopefully future pod friends guest dr amanda rabinowitz and ari ferrari two of my great friends in this community who uh, this community has brought me and so just shout to them shout out to all of you and um thanks for making it to the end of this podcast um as always i just want to thank you for being a pod friend